Right now, today, New Orleans, Atlanta is in the building. You're now tuned into me, 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 <sighs> I'm just saying though, but from a Let nigga that did 20 down. years in jail, just don't start the fucking interview like that. <laughs> JD, I've been looking at you long. Time. No, not like that. Not no, like I that. say a long time, nigga. I'm not like that. Long. I, I was long in that field. What the fuck is going on? I'm not saying it like that. Oh, Jesus Christ! Like how the fuck you gonna start, gonna start the interview off telling the legend some shit like that? Let me tell you something. I've been looking at you. I'm gonna say this, nigga. You been in jail 20 years. I'm gonna say this. When you talk about a producer, black number, excellence. Number one, a producer. Mm. A producer is somebody that take this machine and make and make a sound. Come mm. up with something from out of you know, Ravi Sam come up with something. Um, a lot of times in our world, we a producer or a writer is somebody that say, Oh no, take that little that little that little sound, take that out and just leave it playing. I'm a producer. Is it too is it he touch shit. He be touching shit. It's, a, it's two different things. And then somebody that could take an artist, see somebody in the mall, see somebody anywhere and say, I'm going to make them a star and mm. do it. That's different. Um, he got a, he, His body of work is unbelievable. His proof of concept of being a star maker. He makes stars, baby. Mm. Um, he didn't done it. Uh, he had, you know, some of y'all that wasn't here. He had kids all around the country wearing their clothes backwards. Mm. A lot of people ain't do that. Jump, jump, crisscross. If you look, if you look jump, at the, listen, if you look jump. at the, if you look at the Brats numbers, you look at the plaques. Mm. Early in the game, nobody was doing it. Mm. Do your research. Mm. Um, damn it, everything that came out of land, he touched it in some type of way. Coming up, or influenced it. Um, yeah, influenced it. And sometimes I don't think he get the salutes that he's supposed to get. For, you know, I don't think he get the salutes that he supposed to get for running around with the Atlanta flag, waving it. Before everybody could wave, before it was a bunch of people to wave it. Like he had that hat on, he had the Atlanta Brave shirt. He was put, so we gotta salute you from the rip. We gotta do that. Yes. You know what I mean? It. It's still relevant. Um, yeah. uh, 30 yeah. years later. I'm talking about huh? 33. 30. 30. 30 years, man. Yeah, yeah. He told us what he brought Jay Z, he told us money in his thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He said, Welcome to Atlanta. Mm. Just to let people know, this is what Atlanta is. Come on, welcome to Atlanta. Where the he players play. He opened the doors up. I think. I think now he's like, damn, I welcome too many motherfuckers to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> this shit crazy. I welcome. I welcome Philly, Baltimore, DC, New York niggas, Cleveland, Chicago. We welcome too many niggas down here. Yeah, that's what they be saying. They be saying unwelcome. JD unwelcome everybody. Yeah, yeah. He fuck. He said, right. welcome to Atlanta. We, he was all the bills him and looted. Come right. on down. No, because JD said, just what? thought them niggas was gonna come. He didn't know them niggas was staying. Yeah, they stayed. Now New York niggas uh, all down. They're peeking in all the celebrities' houses and shit. I don't think they did, son. No, those niggas from anywhere. Yeah, but but it's like just to see y'all. Then my brother currency. I was in the you know. Uh, I don't want to say this wrong because he's gonna say I was in the cell when I first heard Cushion Orange Juice and he was on it. Then his mixtape and it was like, damn, he on some shit. And just to see you, I gotta salute you. To see you build a company, a business. See, some people rap and some people build businesses. It's two different things. Yeah. JD Sozo Death is a business. Um. You know, uh, with currency, that's a, you know, jet life, that's a business. Million dollars see, worth of game. It's a business. Yeah. But to yeah. see you do that, to see you have, like, to be your own man, your own company, um, you can put a link up, tour seller like this, cannabis seller like this, merch seller like this. Yeah. You just a, a real deal, man. And it's you hold, a blessing. And, yeah. and you holding it down. And one thing about y'all, y'all waved y'all flags of where y'all from, and y'all never dropped y'all flags. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is presented by Omega Accountant Solutions. Attention small business owners. I'm talking about all the small business owners out there. You may be eligible to receive up to $26,000 mm -hmm. per employee. I'm talking about through the employee <laughs> retention credit. You were a responsible, was your responsible business owner who continued to pay taxes, employee staff members during the pandemic, mm. recover the payroll taxes you overpaid as a refund, of up to $26,000 per employee. Omega Account Solutions help get back the money you deserve 
through the CARE Act. It's called the CARE Act. All it takes is a quick, easy, easy, 10 minute consultation to determine if you qualify. Omega is the small business champion. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about it's the champion of small business. That's what Omega do. Yep. With, with teams dedicated to maximizing tax credits, CPAs even turn to Omega for ERC guidance. Don't miss out on your small business tax credit. Even if you got the PPP loan, there's still time to find out if you qualify and file your claim. Listen, man, what you need to do right so, now. So if you got one listen, employee, call. it's 26,000. Yeah, eight employees, it's 26,000 times eight. You got listen, 14 whatever employees, you got, whatever 26,000 times 14. I mean, and this is a pit. Omega Solutions, Omega Account Solutions is the presenting sponsors of Million Dollars Worth of Game. What you need to do right now, call 855-505-DAVE, 855-505-DAVE, or visit, or visit omegatextcredits.com slash Barstool Sports right now. And then now, the album coming out on four. Yeah, oh, four, 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 which yeah. is his birthday, and four, four, which is Atlanta. Yeah, that's Atlanta day. That's that's they they have a come on. Atlanta you day, have baby. to speak to that. Yeah, you know that's our day. That's our day. It's Atlanta day. It's Atlanta day, and that's that's spitter day. But people yeah. want to know, like, how did y'all two two different worlds come together? When they said y'all just was chilling, and said let's do let's do a project, let's do it. Nah, you want well, all right, dig. I did that record. Uh, I named the record after him mm-hmm. uh, for Harry Fraud. Me and Harry Fraud did the album. Shout out to I Harry named, Fraud. Yeah, shout out to my brother. I, I did the record. And I named it Jermaine Dupree because the beat and shit, the bars that was coming out of me, paused me. Fuck, it reminded me of when he was on MTV fucking Cribs with the Bentleys and shit. <laughs> And that was the first like rapper that, that was on. That's the first rapper that was on MTV Cribs. That was the first time that. I seen like. Something like that. I keep telling motherfuckers I only saw like Hulk Hogan and Britney Spears and shit. <laughs> All and the them skateboarders, thing, the BMX and the boys. Next day is like homie walking through the garage and shit, talking <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, this, this where it's at. So I was inspired that day. I remembered that I bought this Bentley because of this nigga. Mm-hmm. When I first got my money, I bought a bunch of old cars first. Mm-hmm. Like I, I bought an Arnage like immediate, and my mm-hmm. niggas was like, "What are you doing? Like, it's it's the flying spur. You gotta have this car." I'm like, "Nah, my nigga, because I wanted this. Like, and I didn't have no money at Buy this time. Yeah, I, I didn't get that shit out of the way. But I was inspired to do that shit." By his continental T he had in the garage. He told him that he's like, You're not a big dog if you don't have this in your garage. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, he said, talk shit, but he right was the there. first to do a yeah. lot of shit. Yeah, a lot and, of shit. And, and, and I love the humbleness that he's displaying he's right shit. now. But you that nigga, man. Hey, right, man. Hey, hey, man. When you, when you, you know, when you do it this long, you know, it ain't. It ain't really humble. It's just, you know, I just, it's, I just go through the motions, you know. But I also just be thinking about, like, I really just be thinking about, like, how we get to the next. Space of everything that I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like, if we here doing this, that's what my mind wrapped around. I don't even be thinking about all the other stuff that I didn't did. I I did it, but it's 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 to move it's on. Done. And it's really because, you know, I had I had this time in my life where I was really really cocky, and I ran into babyface, and this was before I had more success than Crisscross, and and babyface was like, yeah, you the guy with the little record, the little jump record, oh, and shit. I was like. I was looking at him yeah, like, nigga, like, he almost I'm, made me I'm disrespect him because yeah. yeah. he said little jump record. And I was JD, cocky JD. You know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? And I was like, what little? And he was like, yeah, you know, um, you know, it's cool you did that one time, but how many times can you do that? Damn. And at the time when he said that, I didn't even think about it. I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, how many times can I make crisscross? How many times can I do jump? And I remember I sat for like two hours and nothing else. I ain't see, hear nothing else for like two hours thinking about, oh, damn, it don't mean shit in this business if you can't, if I can't do it again. If I can't, you know what I mean? If I can't keep moving the needle. So my focus ever since that day has always been like, I did this and it's time to move on. Once I get halfway close to it being a finished piece of project, Product, then I'm moving to the next, and that's why I'm mental at. So I always, I don't even get caught up in it. So when people be saying you humble, I don't even really be in that space when people start talking about it. I really be thinking about the next thing. That's Damn! Good. So it took for it took for baby a legend, baby. baby face, to throw a bag of shit at him. Oh, yeah, for, well, him to, like, <laughs> for him to become the <laughs> legend yeah, that he is today, baby yeah, face it fucked me up. It threw me off because it was like, like I said, I was I was like on a, this high. I was was really there like, like a welcome to the NBA kind of thing? Like you know, like. All right, nigga, you had no, thirty. Was he like? Was he really like you shitting? Like he really did that? 
Yeah, like he said it like like Fuck, he like man. like really almost like yeah you you think you did something? Nobody think baby like, you know I shocked babyface was rocking like that. I I really felt like are you and babyface cool now? Yeah, we cool. But I'm saying you brought like, this up. No, too. but you gotta understand how face delivered. That's what I'm saying. If he said it in a way like he like no, like, I, nigga, like no, no. he yeah. said yeah, you know face more. said it in his, he was like that's cool. I mean, he definitely said it in a but way that that, do that made me feel like <laughs> oh. But I mean, I respected him so much. He was giving you game as a felt. baby face fan. Yeah. Was it wasn't scared. the step over. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It wasn't that. It was just because a, baby face ain't aggressive. You're not getting ready. You're not gonna be in competition with me type right, of conversation. Right. That's what it was. Right. Damn. So he like, was just, like, just do this. And I was like, I want to be in competition with you. And yeah. he said it like, nigga, oh, all right. Fuck this stiff arm. Like this LaFace. We LaFace. We run Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That little that's, thing that's, you got going I was, on. And I was at their studio, so it was like, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was spending money right. being in their right. studio. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. It, it, man, it's just sometimes the old heads got to check the young niggas. Oh, not definitely. I like your little yeah. cute little record. Because was it that one moment <laughs> where you had to tell somebody that? Yes. Like, yeah, that's a nice Fuck little record. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, t- I didn't tell them the way he told me, but I told him that, you know, it's the key to... Being like me is to have multiples. Well, I definitely say that. Let's just say this. I was signed to Cash Money, and we was at So So Death Studio <laughs> playing Madden, <laughs> and Jermaine Dupri was losing. Yeah, I lost. And he wasn't this guy. <laughs> he just said it. What do you say? What do you say? He was talking crazy. I lost. He was calling motherfuckers. Call Johnny up. <laughs> he would listen. He lost. He lost a motherfucking chicken that night too. Yeah, I lost. But he was so obsessed with winning that That's beautiful. He just would keep calling in reinforcements. It didn't even matter about the money. Oh, you beat Johnny. Get Ricky to <laughs> uh, called the old man. Me and, 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 and by the way, not, not to cut you off, that, that, actually, that actually started because Birdman was in Atlanta and it was a Falcons Saints game. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's why I, we titled this song Essence Fest because. I wanted to make sure that people that don't understand that rivalry between the Saints and the Falcons, it's, it's real, mm-hmm. right? Every time, and, 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 and I think it was a playoff game where the Falcons was getting up there and the Saints, it was like that time. Because they have to play each other right before the playoffs. So it is one of them two games, right? And I think Birdman bet, like, you know, big, a big number. He put it out there like anybody in Atlanta want to bet. And I jumped on that. And then after the game, that's Yo, when they yeah. came to the studio yeah. and we started playing Madden. I yeah. don't remember who won the real game because I think that's where the, the, the that's excitement that came happened. from. Yeah. It was like, shit, well, if y'all beat our ass on the real I think field, y'all might have won the game, though. Okay, well, then that's where it I came I think from. that's why they came back and get some yeah. of that money back. Yeah, so. Well, <laughs> Cito threw that motherfucker. Yeah, Cito, yeah. the best Madden player ever. Cito, my fucking yeah, Cito, Cito was playing, yeah. Yeah, no, I remember that. But, that, but, that, but that's that real energy. That's the real energy and the true energy of Atlanta and New Orleans. Do do you feel like I know your heart smile now to see where Atlanta has came to? Yeah, like that shit. Like nobody, I don't think nobody's seen it coming in that way. Yeah, I mean last year wasn't as good as the the, the other. I ain't talking about the sports. I'm talking about the rap game, the oh, music. Oh game. yeah, I mean well no nah, no nah, I I actually I actually just learned even more. I was watching the Little Richard um, <coughs> documentary, which hasn't come out yet. Um, and in the Little Richard documentary, he was running back and forth from Macon to Atlanta. So I started watching this and saying, you know what? This musical energy for young black people, it's been in that space, yeah. right? So all you had to do was jump in it, I feel like. I feel like the energy was just running. If Little Richard and James Brown and these two dudes was running back and forth from Macon to Atlanta, then you got Otis Redding and Macon, that, that synergy for... Black artists to be at the top of the music chain, it's just been right in that space. We just had to jump in and do what we had to do. So, and I got, you know, as a kid, I saw SOS Band, Brick, um, Peebo Bryson, all of them, they from Atlanta. So it was like a, it's been out there. It's just a, it's just a, yeah, you know what I mean, it's just, it's just a thing that we had to just jump in it and, and get to it. Now, on the rap side, yeah, on the hip hop side, being a city that was told that we was country, did nobody rap. You know, ain't no rappers from the South, all of that type of stuff. I, you know, we had to go through that. Um, 
for Atlanta to be at the top of the food chain when it came to rap, I was definitely surprised about that. Yeah, they wasn't playing. Now, I think because, you know, the, I don't like the sugar coat shit. I think because New York was blocking y'all out so much because of, you know, being a mecca of hip-hop and all of that, that when y'all finally got y'all shot, y'all was like, we not letting this shit go. We gonna hold on to this shit. Because it's crazy. You'll see motherfuckers in Atlanta that beef with each other. they still do songs. They don't even like each other. But they'll be like, we ain't letting that fucking money come, you know, the beef coming between the money and shit like that. Yeah. So for Atlanta, the way y'all really stuck together was was way different than any other city. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on in Atlanta, but from the outside looking in, yeah, it looked like, yo, them niggas really for each other. Well, I mean, I think each person knew that one other person led to somebody else getting some money in the city, right? Yeah. So if I had somebody that was an executive come down to Atlanta and they come to speak to me, it was also an opportunity for you to pull your car into front of that space or wherever I was at right. so that person can see you. Right. And if, you know what I'm saying? And that, that helped, I think that happened in every camp that was going on. So if it was like organized noise doing that, then it was the next person doing that. It was the next person doing that. So it was always some, you know, each person understood that they, that meeting that that person was having it could, yeah, could change everybody's life. You know, and you know what I say? I see this. You know, the South did some some of the biggest. Y'all two represent cities that had some of the biggest hip hip hop labels in the game. I'm talking about New Orleans and and Atlanta. I'm talking about, but it was ownership involved. It was different. Like even up top, mm-hmm. and I said this. I think I said this on another show when I was telling about how New York guys were signed the labels, but the South guys created the labels. Yeah. And it was a big difference. It was an ownership, and it was an unbelievable education that took place from, you know, um, New Orleans to Atlanta that educated the whole game on, I'm going to be independent. I'm going to do my own thing. Because really, though, when you think about it, the South ain't had no choice, bro. Yeah, it was, so, it was by default. Yeah, That's what it was. Niggas in the you, South, couldn't, you couldn't even get there. Them niggas in the South was haul assing up to New York trying to get a deal because if you was from the down south, you looked at the Def Jams, you looked at these places yeah. like, shit, I gotta get there. That's where it's at. And then they would get in there, they play their music, and niggas wasn't feeling that shit. Oh no, that country shit. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. So nigga, they left niggas no choice but to say, man, we gotta put our own money behind this shit. And then when you put your own money behind it, then you start learning the game. You start learning how this shit go. You start okay, cool. Now you get to a certain level. When you go in there to speak now, you like, oh no, I just need distribution. I'm cool. See, see, a lot of people, <coughs> a lot of people didn't understand it through this country because nigga, if you, if we want to talk about it, in '94, I came in the studio, and I played Master P, and you thought I was crazy, nigga. I did because I was like doing this shit. I said, yo, you this was. nigga. I said, this nigga right here, he's gonna be out of here. I told you that. You cause. did, but I didn't understand <laughs> it. I told you it, that. I'm gonna keep it all the way real. I this one, I was your you, manager. I told you. Turn this nigga the fuck off. He sound you like he got to take a shit. Him and Dice. Uh, uh, I'm like, man, nigga sound like he got a shit. I'm like, for real, I'm keeping he it real. Said that. He said that. I said that. I remember the damn like, dog, he talking some shit, some shit. I said, cuz. He sound like he got a shit, man. Uh, I ain't get that I said, shit. This nigga from- but then as some time went on, it grow on you. Yeah. So by the time motherfucking 99 came, I was like this. Okay, <laughs> now I understand. And I, I mean, I think, I think, not to cut you off, I think, I think that's a lot of times what people don't, like, a lot of times people don't understand my, my movement because I learned, I wasn't just left in Atlanta to learn, right? I, the, I, the Chris Cross album I actually did here in Philly. Mm, at talk stu- heavy. At, 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 studio, at Studio 4. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On South, I mean, you know, Studio 4. So then South Street became like yeah, my... 444 building. 444 building. Yeah. South Street became my... Damn it, like my home every weekend, right? So we did the album out here. Um, I was going to After Midnight. Oh, yeah, you. Like, oh, yeah. you. Yeah, I was out here. I was going to City Blue shopping. Yeah, you, yeah, you was, I was out here. So, I mean, I started learning like a different mindset... Oh. Of how to move my music, right? As opposed to just being stuck in Atlanta. And I start seeing like going to like radio stations and hearing how um I think Lady B was on the radio Lady while B, was the time. Cash, yeah. DJ Ray, oh. I was listening to them and listening to the radio station out here. My mind of like where I was wanting my records to be at was in a different space. You know what I'm saying? So I start thinking about and start trying to sample different records than what was happening. 
in my city. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think the Tough Crew was number one. Uh, like they was, up, they was the, heavy up here. The Tough Crew was number one when I was here at that time. Um, Go damn and, tough. And this was, you know, so so. Steady B, EST, Cool C, EST, all them three times dope. Yeah, the, 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 the three times dope. The Hilltop Hustlers, all oh. that. I was out here. You know what I'm saying? Like really, really. So yeah. I, oh, nigga, you was really, really out here. Yeah, you was you know, out, I was here. out here. Let me I find was, out JD had a pack out west. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying I was out here. So I'm saying so I was, I was, and I was only 19, right? So I was 19. I was 19 going to after midnight. People sneaking. I wasn't even old enough to get in the club, but I was going in there and I seen it. I saw the clothes. I seen, you know. The way niggas was dressing, everything. So I, my mentality about hip hop for artists in the South or in Atlanta, I was I just go home with that type of energy. Like, yo, we got to do this. We got to make mixtapes. We got to get a mix show. We got to do this, that, that. Because I, I saw what's happening more or less here than New York. Yeah. Like in New York, I was in New York when I was younger. But at, at 19, when I started making records, I saw what was happening here in Philly. And how New York was impacting the city, but at the same time, you know, at this point in time with Steady B and the Tough Crew and all of them, Philly was just all about Philly music. Yeah, it was about right? our sound. And, and it was all y'all sound. And I, I think a lot of that played into what I was doing as, as well once I went home. And that's what it's about now, currency. Like 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 with you. You build a you build an unbelievable fan base. You came in the game. Uh, you was at a couple labels. You know I mean, you did your thing. When did you really wake up and say, you know what, I'm doing my own shit? Right before I, like, like just on the bus once. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was on the way to Tour do a bus. show. Yeah, yeah, like, when I was with Young Money. And I just was like, this, I'm I'm participating. I'm a team player. I'm down with, with the program. But I'm not really 100% here because I'm thinking about my partners. I got homies that's talented and shit. And I know I can't bring them. So I got to go and make a situation for this. And it don't make no sense, like, sitting around you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I told, bro. That don't make no sense, like, kicking it and fucking trying to, like, come up off just association when I know I really want to go do something else. You know what I'm saying? That's how it, I did. And was it any pressure, though? Because coming out of New Orleans is like, you got Baby and you got Master P. Mm-hmm. It's like, fuck. Was it like pressure? Like, are you just like, no, nah, I'm going to just do my thing in my manner? Because this, these, listen. We, well, I mean, I had, I had went through both situations. I know. So, I, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't no pressure to get with them. No, it's more pressure afterwards. It's like, well, yeah, I because do my I had thing already now. seen, I already like, went. I had already, like, seen what it could have been. You know, I had, like, seen the potential of, of people, like, trying to fuck with me and put me into the yeah. system. And then I knew the difference of trying to do it on my own. I was like, well, now I'm about to be broke for a minute. You know what I'm saying? But it was better because when the shit worked, it was all mine. I knew if it panned out, it was all for me. You know, I knew I would be one of them niggas, so it ain't even matter. But coming know? from the South in New Orleans itself, like, and seeing, because what it showed you is that, and I think some people get it mixed up. It's, it's players everywhere. It's solid people everywhere. It's money getters everywhere. It, it, you can't put no geographical location on it. For sure. And for two brothers to come out of New Orleans and be historic, master, what Master P and, and Baby did and Slim did was historical. This shit mm-hmm. will be here forever. Mm-hmm. But they did. And coming from down there, did that give you like a, like, yeah, fuck it. I can yeah, do it now. Yeah, for sure, sure. I got a shot like everybody else. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, yeah. I, my inspiration came from Soldier Slim. Okay, so just when, when Magnolia Slim when, when he when he got the Cadillac, he got out of jail, and Master P bought this nigga a Cadillac DTS or whatever mm-hmm. that was at the time. I was like, nah, I got to rap. Like, there's no, there's no other way. You know what I'm saying? Because you, <laughs> this, because this nigga could rap, no album yet. You just got out. All he did was come home, and nigga was like, nah, here, here go shit. I'm like, nah, I got to do that. Cause I was a kid, so I'm like, nah. It, immediately, the way to Cadillacs and shit is mm-hmm. rap. I'm just gonna do that straight up. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now life isn't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Yup, you caught your woman cheating today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Yup, you thought your check was coming and it didn't hit your bank account. It didn't. It didn't drop your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. It's also the number one selling vodka in Pennsylvania, if you didn't know that. But I just thought I'd throw it out there for you because, you know, we're from Pennsylvania. But uh, when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you uh, scoop up some New Amsterdam Vodka and don't fumble it, you hear me? Get it to that counter. Boop, boop. Get home. Put some juices together, some ice. 
Spike up some cocktails. Tootie. Tell them yeah, what Tootie Classics yeah, is. Yeah, that's my oh, New Amsterdam queen. Boy, you can make a, a classic New Amsterdam mills up to you. You can drink it straight up on the rocks with juice, soda, however you want it. But when you're out and about, make sure you pick up some New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports. We appreciate you. Right. Right. Now, now you know what's crazy about it. I just put this up, I think, on my page like about like two days ago, two, three days ago. The best meal I ever had in my motherfucking life was in New Orleans. <laughs> oh, I thought you was gonna say in jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, the second best meal was in jail. I'm gonna tell you about that one. Where'd you go? Morrow's. Yeah. Listen, let me explain something to you. He, I never had oysters a day in my life. He gave me charbro oysters. Yep. Okay. He gave me the he gave me the uh, the um, the crawfish bread. They had this potato salad crawfish in there. Bread. Crawfish yeah, right. bread. Come on, ask me next time. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Listen, it's you, didn't, you didn't want to make no more. Oh, yeah, you can't it's eat change, that anyway. Listen, it's ah. going to change life. He gave yeah, me the can't, listen, can't, listen, My brother, vegan, he, listen, vegan crawfish. Yeah, no, no, listen. He gave me the crawfish bread, potato salad. He gave me this red frizz and shrimps. With, uh, with, uh, shrimp, man. Shrimp with the cornbread. Let's fucking keep saying shrimp. I'm shrimps. talking about, listen, listen, this shit was so, listen, this shrimp shit. with cornbread. Yeah. Can't eat none of this. I mean, I'm just listening to it. I'm just hearing how it is. You know. He got a he got a fucked up pilot, man. It sound like beat jerky to me. Oh man. You see this? <laughs> look. Look, look. Yeah, he just walked you through the menu. He gave you a little bit of that. That shit basically. was amazing, man. Yeah. The yeah. flavors, the, I'm talking about like the flavors of this shit. Yeah. Not JD. everywhere, everywhere you, I'm you know like, what I'm saying? That's what we do out there. But man. but like I see that y'all got your own thing, your own sling. And, and what I told somebody, and what I used to tell young artists, even to the day, I tell them, I said, bring your energy from your neighborhood. Stop trying to mimic niggas from Atlanta. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, because that's what the game, the game is, if you I'm look back to years, niggas from Chicago. Listen, niggas from Atlanta and Chicago, they're probably the most mimic motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't hear motherfuckers try to sound like all these niggas, thugs, gonna everybody. So it's like, I try to tell them, if you go back, when I seen Juvenile in that Hum video, and I, I said, what the fuck? And In the project, sweating I think for what no grabbed reason. People, what grabbed people was that <laughs> he 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 dressed like New Orleans, he spoke like it, he repped, and it, and it shook the whole game up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that was BG and them, when you heard them, yeah, cash it money. Wasn't there. Oh, Anytime it was, you bring something that's not there, it's going to work. I don't know why everybody think that they got to put on this fucking, they got to be sheep now, like, oh, we have to do this. The establishment made it like that, like the suits made it that way, because mm-hmm. you can't, they won't listen, or you can't get a deal if you're not already mm-hmm. like somebody else and shit yes. like that, you know. But that's not how it was. Man, we came up, that's that's what made shit work, bro. Like, all right, so you, t- you said, you made the song of Jaden. He fucked your mind up since a kid in the mm-hmm. MTV Cribs. And like, yep. Like, yep. Like, 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 you know what's crazy? Just say a little bit thing about MTV Cribs. MTV Cribs showed you motherfuckers was getting, and, and JD, like, the flex was crazy, but we got to remember, y'all. I love the stream and shit. I love all this. But JD and them was selling millions of records where people had to put their clothes on, get out of their house, and walk to the store, walk to Tower yeah. Records. So that's a different type of, like, the money was different. Um, you know, he was producing, he was writing, he was doing all this. So that he was MTV, the bank. Man. That, yeah, the MTV Cribs would just show you. Say, I got with his Louis listen, glasses on listen. that you could barely see the Louis on the yeah. frames and all that. So like he was the fucking bank. So it was different. So currency in the crib, looking at him as a kid, like, oh shit, the only other dudes I see is like big time football players are, you know. Yeah, it then, was like Hulk Hogan, bro. Hulk Hogan. That, that was it. That was the other, the other minute, episode. Bro. That was like the other episode. Straight <laughs> yeah. up, straight up and up. And he came so. Now y'all doing a you know, project. How did it really initiate when y'all said, let's do this? Like I, When he hit me about the record, I was like, you know, that's dope that you did that. And just was like, we should line up and do a record. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but I pulled up to Atlanta. And when we kicked it, it just was just through the kicking. And we ended up, when we looked up at the end of just chilling, we had like six records mm-hmm. within that day. You know what I'm saying? And the next day, we, we fucking did the same thing. The next day, we did the same thing. Never conceptualized like let's put a project out. Nothing. I really just thought I was coming to get a beat from this nigga and just like have one JD record in my repertoire ever. But now you got forty seven. Yeah, it ended up being <laughs> what it is. <laughs> That's me. So, versus. No, hold up. Before he say anything, we was arguing. I, I, I got to put it out there. Fuck it. You can say whatever you want. I said. I said this. No disrespect to Diddy. I said JD was smoke Diddy, and the only reason I said that is because. I feel as though, Diddy, there's no bullshit, man. I'm not, 
This ain't this real. Diddy's a fucking beast. He brought a lot of shit. He brought style. He brought a lot of shit to the culture. But I said Diddy then I don't think Diddy was touching a lot of shit. Diddy had a team of motherfuckers. And I know you could be the director and it still be your movie, but it's like, I'm talking about actually touching shit. I don't know if Diddy done that. That's all I told you. Yeah, I'm I, not I, saying... I, I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead because I know before you start, there's a lot of producers out there that be, you know, um, that, that do produce and don't make the beats and don't do yeah. what I do, basically, right? So... But they do produce. I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't discredit it. That's a, that's a form of production. Okay, so tell me how. Huh? Tell me how. Break this. I mean, down. because you know, you still got a, you still got like, if you have like, say for instance, you got all these musicians playing all this music, and you know, you have somebody sing in a certain pocket, and you tell them to sing in that pocket, then you telling the the, the musicians like, you're not touching nothing by the way, you're not singing anything, but you also yeah. telling the musicians like. You know what? Don't play that guitar lick the way you playing it. Play it a little bit different. Now, if you don't know how to tell them to play it, <clears throat> that that's also a funny thing about people saying production. But you still tell them, you still hear it in your head yeah. what you want, right? And you can tell them no, 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 and until and they till they can try to play it closest to what you thinking in your head, right? If you formulating all of that and you in the studio doing that, you are directing as a producer. Um, you know, it's just yeah, that it's just like production. You know, it's just it's, Dire- it's just inch, direction. It, yeah, that's what it just it's just a different man, that you know, like a nigga still in the me, man. I could Consultation. bring some young niggas in right now. Play that. No, I don't like that. Play that again. Yeah, I like that right there. Uh, play something else. <laughs> give me a snare, nigga. No, I don't like that. I mean, that's it's, wait, a, form, it's a form of wait, production. Wait, give me a snare. All right, I like that. Snare. And all I said was. Uh, Puff going to have to bring the team. What was it? The hit makers or whatever? Stevie J? I said, he got to bring them to go against him. He can't just come by himself. So if he right. coming, he got to bring them. That's all I said. I mean, I think I think, I think, think a lot of times with me, you know, even with us doing these interviews for this record, I'm starting to really, like, realize that the thing about Jermaine Dupri that people really, really don't understand. Tell them. Is that <coughs> I really am, like, the that nigga. first, no, no, no. I'm really like the first Bobby of my shit. kind, right? Pretty much. I'm really, I'm really, like, <laughs> I'm really like the first of my kind. Where, like, you know, I was the first producer to be put into the Guinness Book of World Records Talk as heavy. the youngest producer with a number one record. That mm. means that mm. before me, nobody there was nobody mm. seventeen writing music mm. and producing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not not rap records anyway, right? Mm. And I don't think I actually don't think people I don't even think niggas know that, right? I don't think niggas know that to even like put that into the mix, but that's Guess really what? that's really what it is. They know it now. They know it now. Oh. They know it now. Mm-hmm. Hold on. You know, Wait, can you tell us some of the records that you were behind that people may not know that you were behind? That's the best part. Just the best part? Yeah, because I just found out two of them uh, I mean, I, I records that people don't know. You want me to tell me about the records people don't know, I think. You can tell me about the records people know and the records people don't um, know. Because I might not know some of the records that people know. I mean, you know, that 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 yeah, that people that don't give me credit for is like the Young Bloods, damn. Uh, you bone, did that? bone Crusher. That's the one just uh, never scared. I think people know Bone Crusher never scared. Yeah, yeah. I ain't yeah. know that shit. Um, I ain't know that shit either. You know, um the franchise boys is a situation too, like that. I think you know, yeah, I knew that. people, what, but, but the story of it, right? That the franchise boys got dropped from Universal. Um, I did a remix for Oh, I Think They Like Me, and I put it on this on this compilation. And I, the whole time that I was doing it, I kept saying to myself, What is Universal doing with y'all? Because the music not moving, right? And I was hoping that they got dropped, but Universal was still holding them. And, um, I woke up one morning, they was calling my phone. It's like, yo, they dropped us. What you going to do? And I'm like, yes. You know what I'm saying? I was so excited that they dropped them because I felt like a group like that. I'm from Atlanta. I'm yeah. My company's in Atlanta. I knew exactly what to do with y'all, right? They called and said, you know, we put this song out a long time ago. Jermaine, that song didn't work. That's when they said the day about they wanted to take the franchise boys off and put just me, Brad, and Bauer oh, on the yeah, song yeah, for, the, yeah. for the song to work. That's the only way it's going to get on the radio. And I'm like, no, the fuck is not. Like, you you guys are not in Atlanta. You don't know what's fucking happening in the city of Atlanta. Give me the group. Give me the record, right? So, you know, I don't think... Sometimes people don't even actually... They know that I was on the Franchise Boys song. Or oh, I think they like me record. 
But I don't know if people be like when it because when whenever time somebody talk about Jermaine Dupri, they never include these artists, right? They never include these artists as people that's part of So So Death. Yeah. So then outside of that, you got you got Jaquan with the Tipsy record, mm. right? Hey, but, hey. Yeah, everybody in the club getting tipsy. That's So So Death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so know. was so, so. What you ain't know that either. I didn't know that. For real, I didn't know that. I don't know where I. I, I didn't, didn't know that I don't either. Know where I thought Nobody know that. Heard. Nobody no, knew that. Real. I just thought See, that's that what was I'm saying. the machine I, you in knew St. That? Louis at the point. At that point. Yeah, he's that's from somewhere. I didn't know he was. Yeah, so see, that's what I'm saying. It's the majority oh, of these oh, records. Oh, yeah. And that's just, that's five artists, by the way. We just spoke that, you know, collectively people say they don't, they don't know a part of So So Dev. And that's what I think happens when people talk about me battling anybody, not just Puff, because Steve Stout said I couldn't beat the track masters. <laughs> and I'm like, you know. <laughs> I don't know who they got that's going to I'm thinking this. Me, my mind. They got Nas. Okay, they did Nas. Who, who y'all going to line up with based on what I know is in my head, right? And I, so and give I, me and some I of what you know, know in your head. Huh? What's the, some of the shit you know that's in your head? No, I just said that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm looking at like the those stuff artists. People like, don't even know. know. Oh. Say like, say, people won't know. Yeah, oh, okay. like we did an interview and they asked Jop. whose side was he going to be on if it was me, me and him against Puff, right? And, and I... Jock from my hood, so Jock naturally, <laughs> Jock would want to be over on the. I would think he would want to be on my side, but I told him he has to go on Puff's side because Puff needs that. Because once I start getting into that bag of music, I don't. Know, you don't even know nothing about. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I don't know. He signed Boys yeah, in the Hood. They got Blood, Boys in the Hood and Young Jock. The bomb, the fucking bomb crashers got hit. That's crazy. But I'm saying when I get in that bag, it's, it, we can go very, very deep into yeah. that type of music. I don't know how deep Bad Boy can go into that music. And now, and, I, and we, got, I, we know all the popular shit. We know that for yes. Bad Boy. And so I, that's that's all it was. I was just like, you know, I, I, and a lot of times I think that's what it is. I be I be telling them like, you guys don't y'all sound I don't match up. I got a group for everybody group. Or I might got two groups for every one group that anybody got. Wait, hold on. One for the money. Let me come up with this. Two for the bank. <laughs> What's that, Roots? Three to no. get you going. Let's give it to you, the bread. Oh, my the God. The brats in the place. Yeah. Like, Brad will smoke a lot of this shit that these dudes gonna play. Like, Brad, listen, Brad, Brad alone gonna smoke a lot of shit. Shout like, out to my I'm sister, talking about, Brad. I'm talking about Brad gonna smoke shit on the strength of the numbers alone. Yeah. She can stand with some of these dudes. Some of these big records out here. So I don't even know if people understand okay, that. Okay, so, all right, so hypothetically speaking. Right? That was my shit, too. Let me put these headphones back on. <laughs> that was the shit. <laughs> Puff comes with the locks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, now, now, now. Which song? Money, Power, Respect? No, I'm saying, you you got you said you got groups. You only got a couple songs you come, you know wait, what I mean? Wait, wait, hold on. Because you can't get Jay the shit by itself. No. Yeah. Yeah. The lock shit by wait, the offer. On so, Rough Riders. So I, mean, they came I, got, with, I got franchise boys and I got young bloods. Groups. Okay. They have some big songs. I mean, you know. They represent different. I mean, different. They, they represent two different. I don't want nobody to listen to them like, oh, but the young bloods. You know, this, it's t- we, we just talking about the artists records. to artists. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. not talking about music. We're just saying, if you were saying like, oh, you got a you got a group, I got a group. You got another group, I got a group. You got to do it like that, right? All right, well, Biggie alone. Like, how you going to go against Biggie? I, ain't, I, 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 I mean, you're going to take, I'm going to take the Biggie punches. But yeah. but at the same time, you know, like I said, it's a fight. If it's a fight, it's a fight. You don't get in the ring and try to fight somebody and then you pray to God right. that you, you ain't gonna get hit. Well, what about shit. Mace though? You gotta take Mace. Huh? The Mace punches. I mean, see, the, the thing about this, let me say this about this, and I'm not and I'm not trying to dance around it. The thing about this battle is that majority of the records, each one of the artists that Puff brings, I got records with them too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that you produce. That I produce. Right? So if Puff played his version of Big Papa remix. I mean, Big Papa. I'm gonna play my version of Big Papa remix, or the remix where Big actually redid his vocals, right? That so, you still got that never was out. No, it came out. It came out. Okay. You can play it right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Big redid his vocals for my remix. P- Puff has his version, right? We can sit here and judge that. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's a it's a mind battle, right? You know what I'm saying? Like Lil Kim, not tonight. I did that song. Mm. A bunch of people don't know that I made that song Right, right? So then If you have Total Total oh, doing their first single Brad is on the record It's like it's, it's a weird You know what I'm saying It's like 
We never was like beefing the way people oh, no, yeah, wanted like us that. to be. We, we was no out beef. here making music together. Yeah. So if you start putting this on a table, it, it all intertwines with each other, right? So it's hard for you to like sit here and really like just like, you know, the only the only elephant in the room is B.I.G. Mm. And that my man, I don't, I'm like trying to go against him, period. I don't believe nobody could go against him. So, I, I mean, you know, I'm going to take that. And I'm going to dance my ass off when the Biggie records come on. But other than that, dun, 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 dun. Oh. oh. <laughs> money ain't a thing, huh? I'm just saying. You play that money ain't a thing. Dun, 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 dun. That's all I'm going to say. You know, I got a lot. You know, I got, I got, a, I got a bunch of stupid... Records that like give me some, and I say give, me stupid, some. I'm like, give me some, give me some, give me some stupid ha- records. Hating your blood with Jada Kiss and Freeway that y'all don't niggas don't oh, even see know. that coming. Nobody know that. Look, look see, look. Damn. What else? Look, see, look. I can't. I keep saying records. Niggas just sitting there like they don't know. More, 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 more. Yeah, more, more, more. <laughs> I'm saying it's a bunch of records. Like it's a bunch of records, man. It's a bunch of records that you know, like falling Jay Z <laughs> off off of. Uh, uh, See, uh, I, I keep forgetting that you did that. Yeah, see? Right, yeah, I keep Falling. forgetting. It's a yeah, bunch of records yeah. that people be like, you did this? Yeah, sure. Yes, I did this. Right? So it's just go, it's just going to be a reminder. No, but, but, but no, it won't be. It'll be good because people be like, I didn't even know he done that. For sure. I mean, you know, um, and then on the, on the executive side, you know, Shout out to Rocco. He just celebrated his, his album. I think it's been 15 years since yeah, we signed him. I seen the other day. Yeah, I, I signed that. You signed that then. Yeah. How, yeah, I mean songs you you did songs with TLC? Yeah, I did songs on TLC. But TLC was my group first before they yeah. got signed to the face. Um that, that's alone, TLC. Chris Cross just was too much going on for them and I was too young to actually juggle both groups, so I kinda let let them go. But I didn't have to. What songs you done to TLC? Um on on the first album I did um Um Bad by my damn self and something else I can't remember. But on the second album, on the second album I did the intro with Fife. I did um damn I can't think. Um I did a lot of songs on the second album. But the the whole in, the, the album starts off the beat that Fife is rapping on at the beginning. I did that yeah. beat. I did that the intro of the album and everything. But do do you think like? Like, cause you you was big on groups. Do you think like the is is the game missing a group? Yeah, one hundred percent. Cause you know nobody want to be like it seemed like everybody. I be seeing artists together. and I be like, damn, them two should be in a group. It'd be more easy. They be niggas don't want to break that money. Like, down, like, 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 like you understand when I was when I was you know when I was doing my thing, I went and got him because I was when I first put him in the studio, I was managing him. The I went and got because I was managing you, no, man. You, you was who was getting the studio time? That mean I'm your manager, nigga. No, you was like, no, 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 no. I was in the studio. He was a producer. No, no, he was and a rapper. Was a he was a rapper, and, and so he, he knew I didn't rap. He was a rapper, so he knew where to go to be a rapper at. I didn't know that shit. I wasn't trying to rap. But I, I, was but I did, did I take you to studio shit. time? No, you didn't. You was like you my cousin Nice. You took me to the studio. Them niggas gave us studio time no, for they free. Did. No, they, they was Dice like, this did. nigga really is Dice. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to my man Dice Raw. He had me hooked up, but still. They was making you paid. When was, you brought me, it was just <laughs> Now listen. Oh my God! The you, know, time. You, you did that to a couple niggas. He, oh, I got this nigga that's hot. Oh, he actually brought the nigga hot. All right, you ain't got to pay. No, you still pay it though, nigga. When you'll break your yeah, bed. <laughs> and them joints was like twenty dollars. This is my man uh, Peanut. Shout out to Peanut. It was twenty dollars a pop. I took him there. Put him in the studio, you know what I mean? Did a little no move this around. Don't say that, say this. I produced Go fuck him. out of here. I didn't produce you. I didn't ever tell you to take the <laughs> Now listen, Man, now listen. I already knew what I was gonna put down on me because I already I was reading this back when Rap Pages magazine was out. So I'm reading the articles of Masterpiece. So I'm like, damn, I'm gonna sign Gil, I'm gonna be his manager, and oh. I'm gonna put him on my label. I'm just thinking yeah. about all the shit I'm gonna do, right? <laughs> Yo, he know about this shit. I said, listen, and he my little cousin. <laughs> but he don't know. <laughs> I had him do a show. I got paid for. It. He don't Let know do about the it. Fuck out. I said, go up there, rap. Do the the one joint you had off the freestyle. He done it. I got like like one fifty. He didn't know nothing. About. I said, man, this is for promo. <laughs> So I was moving him around. I did everything to move a nigga around. Oh I moved my him God. around the city. I paid for the, I paid the, for the studio. And I made him and I made him a rapper. Like he didn't want he listen, he was going to college play better. He did not know nothing about like to this day, he don't know nothing about the the history of rap beyond be before Snoop Dogg and all of them. He don't know shit else about that. 
So I took this nigga. I said, "Damn, okay, you gonna be my protege, just like you was doing. You gonna be my protege." No, listen though, he not lying though. See, I didn't grow up. I didn't even had cable TV growing up, so I never seen videos. All I did was play basketball and some other shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, so I took him to the studio and said, "Listen, man, uh, yeah, I had the whole layout for. Her. I said, I'm a one. I'm gonna get this nigga a one sheet." Contract and the only thing it's gonna say on that joint. Listen, all it's gonna say is 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 I agree that Wilder's people, aka Wilder, my cousin, is my manager and I'm signed to his record label. All publishing, all recordings, oh, all copyrights on. will belong on, to Wilder's man. people. No, that's what I was gonna one sheet. I was know that what I was gonna do. Gonna do. Yeah, yeah. Right, you see, right, he never right, gave it to right, me. Right, that's right, what right, I was gonna right. slap him in his head with no, a gun. No, I went to jail. Fuck <laughs> 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 you! sent him right to Stables, fifteen joints to his head. You know what I mean? Fuck you! I was in college. You but think you know, I'm fucking going oh, for this bullshit? But, but JD, can I will say this? That contract was a one pager, but I put the right stuff in there. Publishing, copy. I put the right stuff. Master. Everything was going revert to me. And then once you once the contract, once the contract was over, it was going to be a five. It was going to be a five year contract. Oh, listen. Once it was over, it revert back to me again for another ten years. So I had like a fifteen year contract. I had this shit lined up one page. We ain't got to get the whole bullshit. Hey, let me ask you a question. You ever signed a fucked up contract? Huh? You ever had you ever had a fucked up deal? Um, probably. It's a problem. So. I mean, Look, you, know, you, know, you know when a nigga got uh, hits, a nigga don't even remember the fucked up deal. Yeah, because money. I well, yeah, that's that's the thing that avoids fucked up deal or or, or, or will avoid a fucked up deal yeah. if you if you make records that sell past everybody's expectation. They then got, it, they got then it's straight. time to change the contract. You right. know what I mean? It's not even it's not even whatever the contract was. It's dead. It didn't even matter. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, because we did way more. Like Crisscross first album. I'm sure they never thought they was gonna sell eight million records. Mm -mm. <laughs> never. It's not in no way in yeah. nobody's mind because it's the first kid rap group to ever exist in the era. I mean, in in in, in the genre. So wait, hold on. So you had the first kid group ever? Yeah, of course. Okay, and you are in the Guinness World Records for being the first producer, the youngest producer. They have a number one. The number one. Ever. Yes. I mean, it's changed now because there's a million young niggas in Atlanta oh, making right. beats. Dig, oh, okay. dig, dig, dig. You know? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you was yeah, first. It's different now. Yeah, you see but what I'm yeah. saying? It's changed now. There's yeah. a bunch of young niggas making records. But prior. You was first. Niggas in, niggas in the suits that, that you talking had about. To, so it still was that's like probably the long. Me. You held it the longest, then. You held that, that spot. In the Guinness for the longest. For a long time, yeah, 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 probably. But I mean, you know, nobody like I said, could probably do that again yeah. because motherfuckers, you know, the way it worked now. I mean, still with a number, number one, but I don't know, you know, because because we still we talking about number one, top one hundred. I'm not talking about just a no. I'm right. talking about, so, yeah, so, you talk about everybody. So I don't know if uh, you know a young producer has ha had a. Uh, mm. You have to be sixteen to have a top one hundred, I guess, to be. Nigga, you did a lot of tops, nigga. Outside of that, you, yo, like. Off the record, like, damn, this nigga, you was going with Janet Jackson. How the fuck do somebody do that? That's like humanly impossible. <laughs> if, you're like, if you're not a billionaire or something, that's like humanly impossible. Like, this nigga went with Janet Prince and Prince of Bone. Yes, I'm like, there's no smooth way to try to segue in. Nah, there's no way to there's do no it. Smooth. That's it. That's just that's what it. you do. That's that's fuck it. Just get after it. Talk about that's, it. That's there's no the, kind no, of way no, to do no, it. No, JD, oh all God. I want to say, I just want to know one thing. Tournament time. Uh, uh, uh. Make sure y'all download Barstool Sportsbook. Make sure you make an account and make sure you use the word tourney to unlock your $100 in bonus cash. Yeah, if you got a gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLER. Right? Barstool Sportsbook. How did you How did you pull Janet, man? Like, how the <laughs> fuck do you pull somebody on that level? How do you say, was it in a restaurant or the studio? Say, you say, listen, I want to go out with you. I'm Janet. Hell no, you right out. I got I to gotta produce a record on you. She got there, the candles was lit. It was smelling like Baccarat in that oh motherfucker. I, I just had to set the mood for you. Yeah. Nah, I wasn't about that. I wasn't with no music shit. I I wasn't you, I, you just went right at her? I just was on some, like, hang out. I wasn't on no music shit, though. Okay. I, 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 didn't even, I never wanted to produce. We got an argument about me not producing her because, um, you know, she was around me watching everybody else. Get hit like, nigga, why you ain't you? I'm your, I'm your boo, nigga. Yeah. You ain't going. So how that work when we you came that, in the bedroom? We had the exact conversation, and I was just like, I, I didn't come here to, you know, I work. never wanted yeah. her to think that that's what my agenda was, because so many people were saying that, oh, that nigga trying to get there. Mm. I was, that's not what I, 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 you know, when Janet met me, she got picked up from the airport in a 
Continental tea. Mm, talk heavy, mm, nigga. You know what I mean? And it oh, like, oh, it ain't like, it ain't, it ain't, oh, like, oh, 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 Nah, it wasn't that. Ain't that, that one, nigga that's bought not, his best car to nah, fuck out for yeah, that. Nah, that, that's not. She, actually, I said that the wrong word. The best, it was the nah. She, uh, he's, I, you know, that wasn't the best. Mm. No, I, a, that's what she got picked up in the nah because the T was too small. Mm, but like, but like, what do you do mm. for a woman? <laughs> but listen, what do you do no, for a woman? No, that no, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So, what was that conversation like when you came in the bedroom and she could have been in there some lingerie and said, "Why you never produce any of my records?" I mean. You know, you, you have to explain. I try to fi- figure out how to explain Man, it. See, how you start to, stumbling yeah, right that's there. That's what it was because She's not, not even here. He's it was. It was actually. A, it was actually a thing where I didn't. I didn't really know how to say it because I, everybody else I was producing, but I was. I was at a point where I was like, I'm not getting ready to do this with you because I don't want to be the person that mess it up. I, and I respect Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, right? I, that, these guys are gods to the me. legends, right? So I'm like, you don't need me, but in her eyes, and what she saw everybody else doing, that didn't sound right. Yeah. It sounded like I was doing, I was in the wrong space. Did that cause a rift, though? Huh? In a relationship? Yeah, a little bit at, at some point because it was like, you know, the the CEO in me. If I seen niggas that worked for her that, that was fucking up. It was hard for me not to say something, right? Yeah. So I'm like, them niggas ain't that. A, well, then why the fuck you ain't doing it? Oh, I'm like, oh, oh okay, yeah. all right. You know what? That's different. All right, let me go. Well, you should have, if you was here doing this shit, if you was here doing this shit, you was there. Now, one last thing. What do you do for a woman that financially got it all? How do you take a date? How do you make up a date? How do you buy gifts? Like, what regular uh, shit? I mean, I same thing. That's the thing about our relationship, which is so funny, is like I said, when niggas speak about it, they don't speak about me. I'm a nigga that got it all too. Like what that's you what was, you know, I, like I'm saying. So you just figure out what's the best for two people that's got it all. I yeah. guess. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? I, like that. I ain't have what she got. I might not have as much as she got, but I got my shit. But I got my shit, yeah. and yeah. you know what I mean. I ain't gotta ask you for nothing. So if you in that position, you got two people that. It's whatever. Now, what y'all, y'all did? A, y'all did a project. Who y'all got on this project, y'all two? Oh shit! Well, the whole because y'all thing, can call anybody. We broke it into volumes. You know what okay. I'm saying? So it's a few more other guys that's not on this one that's about to drop right now. But this point right here is just got Ti and Two Chains on it. Mm, okay, yeah, not on the same record. They both two different hard ass records, and he rapped on one too. So I guess mm. you got to say feature and JD too. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. now, now. I seen JD with the box. It fucked me up. He bring that beat back. He bring that beat back. It's like, damn, I thought he, I thought he was done like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. We thought you had the box. Like, what the I fuck's going on? Yeah, see, you know what? Let me explain y'all to the box, though. Let me uh, explain y'all to the box. <laughs> I didn't know you ain't here. Was, was, was that yours? Man, yeah. now I want to explain it. I want to explain it. <laughs> because I feel like, I feel like it's just, just the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Okay, I respect and that. Everybody keeps talking about it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. But I don't see niggas doing nothing for the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Okay. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Anybody you out there? Just I'm it. The they just saying it. I'm they playing the music. Are oh, we going to a concert? We've been going to concerts 50 years. What right. are you doing for it? So for me, that was my ode to what hip hop did to me. What hip hop would have made me do is put that on. Mm. Hip hop would have made. You dr- hip hop made you dress up like Kanye mm. for your birthday. Mm-hmm. Hip hop makes us yep. do shit and has made us do shit mm-hmm. that we didn't want to that we that we probably shouldn't have done. Like when I said when I came out here to Philly, niggas used to have these little afros that used to be like these little Around. these Around. little things and they cut them Around. like you know when niggas get that 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 line shit that you that the barber shit they get that shit from Philly. Niggas used yeah, to, yeah. niggas out here in Philly the used to do shit. that. Back yeah. That come from here. Yes, I know that for sure. And yes. the niggas in Philly used to have these aviator glasses that they wear. Yep. Right? God damn. This is all he from hip-hop. Philly for real. Nigga ain't this from me. That's what born in hip hop and every city. This is had what hip hop has done to. And so I'm saying, for me, I'm like, shit, I got a chance to make a video. 
By the way, this is what videos always were about. Now niggas is renting cars and videos. Y'all doing the same shit. You talking about my hair? You rented your Lamborghini, nigga. You rented that house that oh, you Oh, you rented your hair? No, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying. saying. That's that, what people like it's a... Because we did that before. We niggas said it was a... Yeah. What they said? What the, what, the, what the thing that girls be having? A, a lace, lace front. front. Niggas called it a oh, lace no, front. Oh, no, me and him, we got... We, got we had some joints. You don't see when we got hooked up? They, they, what? They got this shit. Oh, okay. I had so curly hair. I, we wanted to, re we wanted to <laughs> remember this back to what we had here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just that. saying, so I felt like for a video, yo, you can't just go to a video and just like, that's what's wrong with hip hop to me. Niggas, it's your opportunity to do something. Yeah. Niggas just be going to the video just like they just walk downstairs to their house. No, nigga. You gotta go buy them sneakers. You gotta go get fresh. You got yesterday we was doing a photo shoot. I went to the store four times. And then kept leaving. Four times, because yeah. this nigga changed clothes on me. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> this is photo shoot. This nigga got everything. Oh, this Let me ask you shit. a question, though. When that joint got on on your head and got lined up, that motherfucker felt good for that little 45 minutes. Wait, wait. It? The hair? Yeah, motherfucker. Nah, nah, nah. I wasn't, I, I wasn't even tripping. Because I'm saying, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell you good, I was in the, What felt man, good. Boy, what felt good. Before, what felt good. What felt good was the people saying, <laughs> What'd you say? I fuck nah, he with wore, it. He wore it before. He wore yeah, it. Yeah, I wore it before. So what, what felt good yeah. was the people saying they fuck with it. That's and all I saw people saying, Oh, oh, oh. That's in the girl yeah. say, Damn, you lost 10 years. I'm like, Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to bring this motherfucker back. It was like, I just got to figure out when. The wind was trying to get under that motherfucker. That's what I told him. We were shooting that shit on the bridge, and the wind was trying was to find. There. A little pocket, I was like, that motherfucker gonna lift motherfucker. up. Y'all was out there was Wendy Williams. Yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to lift up on him. I was like, I ain't let the wrap it up, motherfucker, dog. Motherfucker, little motherfucker coming up like <laughs> Cameraman talking about, turn a little bit to the right. Yeah. He like, yeah. Cause I had a part, you know, I put the little part, the little curve part. Yeah. That's what, that's what, <laughs> that's a little slit. The little, 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 little wet pocket, that shit was crazy. Yeah, see, the right that shit was crazy. The the right right hey, he picked the wrong day to put a little alleyway in his shit. <laughs> yeah, he was tripping. What's by the way? So before I leave, what is what was them little afros called? We don't know. We just went to the barbershop. shop. And our know, guy got him. He had, he had got him. It's like it was like these drones where he put this. It was like he put this glue in your head, and there's like a big bush by itself. And then he he designed he trimmed the that shit. That shit was it. Was like we got baldy, so he put the glue all on our joints. He put it on there, pat it down, and shit dry. And next thing you know, he blend that shit because you had to make sure you was woofing so he could blend that shit in. Oh, man, I felt good, man. Oh, you no, I'm not talking about the fake ones. I'm talking about the, the old Philly haircuts. The way oh, no, you're talking about the rounds. I'm just yeah. talking about the rounds. They call it the rounds? Yeah. It's like a round joint. So you go yeah. to the barbershop and say, I want a round. Yeah. I, you know, it was like rounded off. I know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, rounded off, yeah. Oh, you talking about the dark shit? No, you talking about the rounded off. Mm -hmm. The, the like, round off yeah. things that they It wasn't a box. We ain't rock the box. No, it was round. No, we ain't rock the square joints. We rock our shit rounded off and it be tapered off right here with the motherfucking point. That's what he had. He had a red. I'm just trying to imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, had the flat tops going and shit. Lay yeah. a little nigga eat a whole platter on the top of your shit. <laughs> This nigga crazy. I don't think what I I I didn't actually I, I couldn't get an actual real flat top like I had in the video. Man. That was another thing. I was I was you know it's my first time having that. Yeah, I'm still stuck on the other one. I'm I'm picturing I'm picturing Grand Pooba. Like was it like Grand Pooba? Yeah. <laughs> He said nah. Grand Pooba. Yeah, that's who they have. That thing was cool as fuck to me. That's what they have I'm picturing. Nah, the rounds was... Do you, you ain't never seen, like, the Three Times Dope video? No. Oh, that... Like That's cold. The, great, right, the, great, right. the greatest man yeah, alive yeah, video. Come on, I man. fuck with yeah. them. Nah, nah. Come dividends. On, man. Don't do us like dividends. that. Dividends. <laughs> Nigga made dividends. The dividends yeah, record. Yeah, dividends. Yeah, that dividends. greatest man alive video. Oh, you you yeah. a historian yeah, too. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the cool. See, see the one right here. Look, 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 look. Yeah, I know that. The one like in the green. The other one was a Gumby. Oh. No, no. This cut was fucked up, though. No, that's sort of like a round. Yeah, it's not like a round. Can we just can we just can we just do a little. Three questions real quick before we get out of here. Yeah. Ask him something about hip hop. See if he know it, man. You do the same thing for him. Mm. Mm. I don't want to kill JD. We like played this game with Shaq. Game. I think him and Shaq tied. He beat Funk Master Flex. He beat Cosmic Kev. He beat he pretty much. I'm gonna beat do something everybody. simple for you. What's the name of this group? Holler at a player if you see me on the streets trick. Put your hand down, nigga. <laughs> we got it. Oh, they from Georgia. This is shocking. Yo, is this a shot at him? This is him a killing? Is him a killing? Is this for real? No, no, no. Don't say nothing, nigga. Nigga, don't say nothing, nigga. 
Wait, wait. Don't you better I'm, not say nothing. No. I'm trying, I just can't believe this. Shots fired. You I'm did. You, you get him. I'm trying to think. Oh, he got you. Lo, you really a fucking legend. Oh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. And I went to his city. I don't hear it. Yeah, um, you went to his city. That's tell him who it was. What's up? I don't you done? It. Tell him who it was. Wait, hey, hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna show him who it was. Ooh. Wait, no, no, no. You tell I'm him who it is. You, you tell him who it is. Maybe I'm gonna be wrong. No, you're not who. I'm right, gonna show you currency. Jim Crow? Yes. Damn. Who you say? Jim Crow. Jim oh, Crow. Okay. You know oh, yeah, who he is. Now, now that you say that, yeah. I'm, I, but yeah. You, I, you, you said. No, 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 no. That's listen, cool. Don't that's try to clean that shit up. I'm trying to fix Hey, do me a favor. Get the broom in the, in the tray. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he so you clean this shit up. Damn. You, you I was trying to hear it too. I was trying to hear it. He did. He did. He was trying to hear it. But I knew he wasn't. Like a lot of people don't know about Jim Crow. That was the shit. No, I know about Jim Crow, yeah. but I'm just saying that you that verse. I'm just thinking that like that was the song. That was like a single. I know, but I'm saying that 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 part of the song just you, you throwing legend. that out. That was a that was a throw out right there. That threw me off. You got questions? All right. Um, mm. Mm. I give you one, and if you get this, where, you win. Where was the first hip hop festival? Mm. Nigga, you was two. If you say this and you was two, ain't no way you knew where them niggas that was talking hip to the hop. The no, 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 no. Hold, hold, hold. You talking about the Budweiser Fest, right? No. Mm. That means you lost already, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, where was the first festival? <clears throat> hip hop. The first hip hop festival was in Atlanta. Fresh festival. Fresh fest. See, I'm thinking I'm mixing. All right, but listen, I'm gonna say this. Mm. It's one one. What artist is this? I even want a Benz or a Beamer. Ooh wee. Um, Queens. Um, watch, watch, he's wrong. Watch this. You done? You done, JD? I'm oh, done. Oh, 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 no, no, you wait, 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 wait. I even want a Benz or a Beamer. Um, not you. Outcast. Damn, he got me. He fucked you. Up. Listen, I was ready to get that. He yeah, got that was, he had to If get he would have got that. If you would have left the ooh, if you would have left the ooh wee out, you would have had me. That for was from real? New, listen, yeah. you know what that was from? Come. That was from New Jersey Drive soundtrack. You remember they had the New Jersey? Yeah. It's Benz. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the Benz. They stole all the Benz. I just bought two of those Benz. Yeah. 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 All the ones they you like. Yeah, I just got them. Yeah, yeah. They fucking stole them bitches. I was going to You weren't give me no more because see what happened was, I'm going to tell you this. This is how my mind worked. Damn. When y'all said, he said hip hop historian. Right, Jim Crow to me is not history in hip hop. No, right, it's, it's, so, right. I so my mental when he said when you said that, right. he thinks I old, start old going shit. backwards. Like, okay, this nigga getting ready to say something. You said it, so I'm thinking like back when you said that. I'm like, wow, this nigga. I gotta goddamn get to the. <laughs> you try, <laughs> yeah. I gotta get. I gotta get up. Yeah, Jim Crow. I, went in, I went in that space. So when you, so this second one, I'm like, oh, this nigga's been, you he, still he over here. But that area, shit is about. If you think about it. That's about 15, that's it about is, 20 years old. but it years don't old. feel like that to me. It don't saying. feel yeah. like history to me. That's the only reason. You got one more for me? Uh, let me think. One more. Um, yeah. Come on, cuz. You got to get this. Don't go out like this. No, he already got me. He up 2-1. No, he not. He up 1-1. Um, no, it's two, he, listen. Remember, he, he, he got- Oh, he answered one, but he got to ask he got, you a question. He, he answered one. It's the three. Yeah. Um, Come on, cuz. Bottom of the ninth, baby. I'm on second. I just need to see. I got you. I got it. Who was the opening artist? Oh my God! He oh was. Lord, that come burst. on, man. I'm thinking we're talking about the song. Oh, you want to do a song? He talking Smokey Robinson. I'm, 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 I'm trying to baby. give you something. Okay, let me give you a song. All right, my bad. He's doing a real historian. He, he was going to win. He knew I was in that that fucking festival. No, he said his he story. He was there. <laughs> over the night. He was over. He was. I don't know. He, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, Damn. Um, um, let me let me see. Hold on. Wait. 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 Uh, he knew that song. Um. JD been in the game since he was um, like five, so he been. I'm the coolest. I'm the baddest rhyming apparatus. Oh. Damn, you don't know who that is. I'm the coolest. I'm the baddest rhyming apparatus. No, I don't even know. I ain't I'm gonna... the coolest. I'm the baddest rhyming apparatus. Come on, cuz don't do this shit <laughs> Not right now. I'm the coolest. I'm the baddest rhyming apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's such a gas. I'm a coolest. I'm the baddest ramen apparatus. You got me. Who that? Oh, you motherfucker. God damn. Don't say it like that. Just mm-hmm. give it a shot. Oh, Scream yeah. somebody. No, it's cool. I got a lot of no, wins. No, 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 you don't. But damn. The fuck you mean I don't? I've been beat. I, been, I just killed the hold us the fuck I, down. I just killed Cannon and the drama down in the fucking did, Atlanta. But they fucking young boys. You, you bring the OG and he dust you the fuck off. And, and listen, that, and, and, listen, and the P Rock. Listen, man. Stay out of my DM. You don't want this work, man. P Rock. See us new. Yeah, P Rock. I know you're a legend, but you said something when I see you. We gonna have this battle. Uh oh. Why you fucking just lost? Ain't no, no that's good cool. time I to tell lose. a nigga you gonna battle. It's like you tell a nigga as you got your ass whipped. And Johnny, when I see you, you we say, rumbling. You just have to He like break it the fuck <laughs> on. <laughs> I see exactly what to do to oh beat you the God. fuck up. Like, but you ain't listen, You ain't said wait till the next episode. But no, listen, hold on. This shit. not a belt. This not a belt round. You ain't said this was for one of my belts. Yeah, it's for. This and so it don't matter. I can take this L. You know how these boxers don't be putting their belts up. This Who was the clash Who said that? Huh? Who said that? Song? Run DMC. Damn. Damn. Bitch, you didn't know Run DMC? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Make sure y'all get the fucking album. <laughs> no, fucking finish, we gotta still let them do their thing, man. Tell, tell us, listen, tell us why they gotta go get this album, man. Please, man. He's um, from, from my perspective, it's, 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 um, it's just good music. You know what I mean? I feel like it's good music. It's also, um, it's it's um two guys coming together that that got their own space, mm-hmm. got their own shit. Um we ain't need this record to improve either one of our lives. Um both it's, criminally it, underrated. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? We're both criminally yes. underrated. And you know, whatever. Yeah, That's and it's it just it's just got that energy. It's got an energy that that um if you take those three things and you in, and you somewhere in that space in your life, um, you can use what's happening with this project as motivation. That's why the that's why the title is what it is. It's yep. it's, it's, it's to motivate you for motivational um, use only. And and that's, that's why we moving shit. around like we moving around because I want to motivate these these older guys that feel like they could just sit around. They ain't got to do shit, but they yeah. think it's gonna just pop off. It ain't gonna pop off. You got to get out here and go to work. And it don't matter if you young or old. Yeah, get up. You still yeah, got to go work. Move around. You, gotta you can't do just you gotta do that do. shit all on the phone. Motherfuckers just think if they just keep posting on something. On, yeah, you can't fuck around like that. You still got to do the work. Got to be physical, up. man. Yeah. Got to get a physical game. It's a digital game in a physical game, you right. saying? That's the only way to kill it, you know what I'm saying? Why not knock it out mm-hmm. on both sides, you know? Let me no stone unturned. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight. Yes. Where we give you that news you can use. We always yes. giving you information, man, mm-hmm. of just how you can get off that couch, how you can make some moves, how you can take your business to another level, mm. and just information on business. Some people don't, you know, some people might be working, but Million Dollars Worth of Game then came with the spotlights, and we didn't get your information. But people went from working to turning it up and being an entrepreneur and starting mm. their own thing. Today, I have my brothers here from New York City. I'm talking about New York City. If you live in New York City, I'm telling mm. you, I'm talking about the world. But for those in New York City, y'all don't understand. Y'all got Jews in there Y'all got a lot of information mm. In New York City And y'all mm. sleeping on it Y'all need to be tapped into Millionaire Essentials These brothers Tevin and Brandon They're on another level They're not just going to teach you How to get your stuff funded But they're going to teach you How to build your own Funding company You can fund mm. others And you can make it happen I'm telling you This is not no game baby New York City What's going on I'm talking about New York yeah, Give me that mean? number Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. That's mm. what I'm talking about. But what I need y'all to do, I'm starting it off right. We're going to do this right. Number before done. What they're going to do is, once you text MWG to 917-809-5707, I'm talking about 917-809-5707, what you're going to do, text MWG to that, they're going to give you a live class. And they're going to give you 30 days. I'm talking about 30 days straight. 30 days of coaching. They're not playing no games. They want you to get this what? information. 30 days. And listen, you're not spending no money right now. You don't wait, have to wait, spend that. that shit again. They're going to give you a live class and they're going to give you 30 days of free coach. I'm talking about 30 days. They give you a free live class and 30 days straight. I'm talking about a whole month of live. I'm talking about real live coaching. So no, when it's I'm, not live, is it? it, it is it, it live coaching? Yeah, they're going to be on the answer questions you and all that back and forth in the Discord. They're going to give you an information. Damn. But what yes, I'm saying yes, is sir. this. If you in New York City, I know you've been looking for these guys. Mm. I'm talking about just New York City. You could be in anywhere in the country, but they're from NYC. They're Gross. from New York. Oh, what, what part is y'all from? Queens. Queens. Okay, y'all ain't from Bronx. They say the Bronx is the dirtiest part. That's what he'll yeah, say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not saying dirtiest. Shout out to all my people in Bronx. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, <laughs> niggas came up from the but, second but, dirtiest part of New York. But, but I, will, I will say this. Tevin, Brandon, 
Give my people the game on what y'all going to do for them and how y'all going to change them. And give them the information to not just get funded themselves, but become a funding company. And why is that important? Listen, the biggest issue in our community is access and capital. We show you guys how to access the capital and also why accessing the capital, making money off the knowledge on getting the capital. The biggest business in this, wor- in this world is Amazon. Amazon is the middleman. So we're showing you how to become the bank. Becoming a bank is going into the bank, knowing the knowledge, how to get a line of credit for 100K, get a high limit business credit card. Now you can get clients to make five to 10K per client by accessing the capital, by showing them how to access the capital. We're trying to build an ecosystem in the entire country where if I go to Philly, Wallow, you got to fund the company. I go to Dallas, somebody else got to fund the company. I go to California, somebody else got to fund the company. Now we're solving the problem of us trying to get capital. Everybody has a funded company in parts of the world, and we all can get access to the capital in different parts of the country. Let me ask you a question. When you say funding, uh, what type of banks or credit cards, what, what you talking about? Like, Tell me what type of funding. Lines of credit, high limit credit cards. These are no doc loans and what lines of credit. What type of credit, credit cards? So you get a Chase Unlimited card from 50 to 100K. Right. What else? What other type of cards? So there's also American Express cards, Business Platinum. You could use points for free hotels, free. I know you know about that. Oh yes, sir. I know you know about that. <laughs> yeah. High limits. All right. Now you can get these things with no docs. So you all you need is a good credit score. You don't have to show tax returns. You don't have to show bank statements. You don't have to show receipts. None there's no that. doc loans and lines of credit. Oh, so damn. So if I'm Johnny Nobody, y'all gonna help me get that, and then y'all gonna help me start my own funding company after y'all help me get that. Y'all gonna. Get me in line, and then y'all gonna say, "Here go the game. Start your own thing." Yes, sir. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and give you the game, but not only just give you the game, but we're gonna also teach you how you can do it for yourselves, right? Because obviously, you gotta help yourself first before you can help somebody else. So if you can help yourself first by getting the funding and being able to use and leverage the lines of credit that you're able to now receive, whether it be a no doc loan, a no doc line of credit, or a zero percent interest credit card, you can now put it into a company that can generate money for you. Or if not, then you can go ahead and, and go out there, do the marketing, get the clients, and now be able to fund those clients and get eight to ten thousand off of each client. That's major. Oh man, so so no, hold on, hold on. I'm a little confused. So when you say fund the clients and make how much you said to me? Eight to ten thousand. How you how you how you how you do that? So, like I said, Amazon is a middleman. All you are is becoming the bank. You're being the middleman. So now you have the knowledge on how you get a hundred K. Johnny Bravo, he doesn't know how to get funding. He needs funding. Everybody in this world personally or his business needs funding. I'm getting you the 100K and collecting my success fee. I'm charging you 10%. That's 10K on the back end. I just got you the 100K. You take the 100K. I charge you 10%. That's 10K. You could do that per client. So you're 10 taking clients 90K. a month. You're taking 10. Yes, no, I'm saying they, you taking yeah, 10. Oh, yeah, they, they taking 90. 90. They getting 90. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Now you can build your business. That's major. So so my whole thing is like, how did y'all get in the game? Funding ourselves. Who gave y'all the game? Did anybody give y'all the game? Y'all just learned the game? So I, for me, myself personally, I was I was looking over it for about five year period of time. My daughter was born. I said I needed to get out of the rat race. And with doing so, I learned about 0% interest credit cards. With learning about it, we went to a company, Joe Smo company. They went ahead and, and gave us about 170000 in funding. We didn't know what to do with it. So at that point, we needed the coaching, but we didn't have anybody at that point to coach us. Fuck the money up. (laughs) Actually, not really. We actually went ahead and did a real estate flip and we actually made our money back. So we was able to actually put it into something. But then we we then later on said, you know what, we need we need a little bit more mentoring. So, you know, we stopped by our man Herman. We went through his mentorship course. And then now, you know, even Herman sends us some clients. But we're doing so. Um, we actually learned the game and, and took the, 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 the knowledge further and learned about no doc loans, no doc lines of credit, where you don't have to provide anything but your LLC, your EIN documents, your operating agreement and your credit. So with doing so, now you're able to get 50 to 100,000 from one bank. And we're just talking about one bank. If your sequence is proper, you can go and get 500,000 from five banks because now it's 100, 100, 100, 100 from each bank. Mm. Damn. And 10% on, on each hundred. That's 50K. And that could be one client, one business. Imagine mm. you do 10 clients a month, 10 must, businesses a month. I just want to say they must be doing a lot of clients. Because <laughs> they ladies are sitting over there with all types of Gucci. But let's see y'all got <laughs> shit on in there. I'm talking about $4,000 boots and shit. I'm going to beat yeah. them like, oh, I'm like shit. Them niggas is. They running a lot of niggas and they're getting ten percent. But 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 this, but this is something. This is this is this is what I need to know. What I need to know is this. All right, 
how do I, once I call y'all, I get the joint, I get connected with y'all, how long do it take for me to understand the game and know the game so I go to the next level? So this is the great part, right? Like I said, all you need is a laptop and a cell phone. Now, if you have good credit, you can get access to funding, but you don't even have the good credit to make five to 10 care client. Now we have all the information inside this coaching and live training. All the information is in there for you to start getting clients right away. So now even if you get a client in, we have the whole system set up. So if you get a client in tomorrow, you don't have everything figured out, we'll help you fund that client. And you can make five to 10K without having everything figured out, without having good credit, with just a laptop and a cell phone. And we show you how to set up the entire system. So you, you get to start first week. You get a client, somebody that got a good score, somebody that needs 100K, get them in there, we'll help them get funded. Mm. While teaching you the game Yeah we had a mentee That actually came through our program She paid the 5000 She came in She said hey I want to get this client funded she, We went to Chase We got a $60,000 Chase credit card for, for, for the client And then also She went to PSCCU And then they got a $40,000 uh, Line of credit And credit card together So they got 100000 In total in funding And now 10% of that Was $10,000 Damn This shit is like they, Like you, And that's one client My fault I don't, You know that's one client. Mm. One client. So so my thing is like, what is the information that y'all giving up in this first class, this live class? Like So like listen, I know what they're getting for free, man. I'm gonna give it to you right now. This is this is the funding circle, right? I'm gonna teach I'm gonna give y'all the banks that we use to get half a million to a million dollars. No doc loans. You got PNC, you can do the application on the phone. You get up to 100K line of credit plus a business credit card, that's 25K. You got Key Bank, you get a 50K credit card, 50K line of credit. You got MNT, they do a 100K no doc loan and a 25K credit card. This is all business now. All business. And then you also got Citizens mm. and then you also got a bank that's close to you Univest. Mm. Now, if you live on the East Coast, New Jersey, New York, Tri-State area, that's your blueprint. That you can go to all of those banks with a good credit score, get half a million. And if you use this How about website, could you do all this? Like, we go to all these banks in a day? If you set up the appointments, but they're in different locations. Saying, but yeah, this is within a week. Within, 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 within no, a week or two. The feds is legit. I'm just saying, but then they're going to be like, how the fuck you making 11 banks in one day? You can't. <laughs> fuck wrong saying, with you, legit. nigga. You just keep running around borrowing money all, all in they one can't day. Say, no, it's legit because they can't yeah, say nothing about that. I'm just saying it is legit, but you still What are they going to say? I, I still I'm think like an old street nigga, man. You going to make a nigga hot, man. I just do this shit 11 days in a row. I'm not doing this. Don't worry. We the coldest in the game. We the coldest in the game. So we got to him down, we got you. We can make it happen. It, it's, it's all about the strategy. And this is legal, but I'm just saying the old the way I used to grow raise. It's like eleven banks in a day. That sound crazy? No, right? not eleven. Yeah. But but do you got to understand this? Because he said if you sit here today, I make a point. I say next Monday I'm going to Key Bank. I'm going to M and T. I'm going here. Mm-hmm. I'm going. I'm going at ten o'clock, eleven thirty, twelve thirty. What's you go to five banks and win. You go, I'm you saying can. you go to five it's, banks in a day. You can. It's right. really can. that that's simple. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Yeah, that's cool. Once you Not put all your paperwork in line yeah, and anything cool. aligned and your stuff match up and you legit yeah. and, you, and you already set the appointments up with the business. What's that person called inside of the, uh, the people they had in the business accounts? Yeah. Yeah, relationship managers. Yeah, relationship managers. It ain't going to be so, a big deal. And, and that's important for us, right? Because and some of them you get online, right? Yes, but the Absolutely. relationship managers is what matters, right? So we, we teach you how to build that relationship with the relationship managers because that's what's important, mm. right? When you go into these banks, you can't just get a no-doc line of credit or a no-doc loan program that easily because not all bankers know about it. And two, they won't offer it to everybody because they weren't a client with you from before. Mm. So now when you go into a bank, you build a relationship with a relationship manager or a relationship banker. Now you can get these programs because- they have different offers and different tier packages that they can offer to clients of theirs. So now I go into a bank that's like Chase, which they offer up to 150,000 on a 0% interest credit card. Mm. I can go in there and say, hey, I have a client that they need 150,000 or they need 100,000 or they need 50,000 on a credit card. They're gonna go ahead and do something called a DocuSign or something of that nature so that my client can now, one, be at ease with the transaction, Two, be able to get the funding because they have the credit score. And three, which is very important, they have the relationship now with that banker so they can continue to keep growing their business and get other products. Damn. So so my whole thing is like this, man. Since y'all been doing y'all thing, how many, how many people does y'all put on? So we've definitely almost close to 100 mentees. But as far as funding, we've done over $3 million in five months in funding. Damn. Y'all getting them that more, cake. More than that, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. If we count, if we count these two months together, we've done over, I think, four or five million now. 
And see, from the looks of things, I believe them. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's just, you know, it's just crazy because it's like so many people out here, they don't understand what OPM, you got some of the greatest business people, uh, uh, a lot of the greatest corporations in America were started off OPM, mm -hmm. other people's money, meaning system money, you exactly. know, money that's out there that's out there and available for people and people just don't know. It's so many people that don't understand uh, what these loans is, what do they call it? SBA loans or something? SBA loans, SBA, loans. SBA 7A loans. So, yep. You know what I mean? So it's like so many people don't understand and it's like, especially when it comes to us, we're just getting really uh, updated on this type of stuff. I've been here forever. Yeah, but we just started to uh, really tap into. So it was great that brothers like y'all, you know, Millionaire Essentials is coming through to give out this information, uh, you know, and it's like, it's just crazy that we so late in the game. For real, we really are. But for those that's jumping, catching them and jumping in, I'm seeing so many people just flourish like it ain't never before because they're getting the funding that they need because so many people got ideas. And like yeah. you said, everybody don't have to be able to start. Some some of y'all go understand that this could be my business right here. They're giving you the alley hoop on the business to start, how to start your own funding company. But some people be like, Man, I'm trying to fund my music. I'm trying of to course. fund this garage. Yeah, I'm trying to fund this trucking company. Yeah, I'm trying to fund this clothing line. I'm trying to fund this this restaurant. You get, come to y'all, get the funding for whatever they need. Y'all give them the game, and they go about their way. And absolutely, and, and a very important thing, right? With a regional bank, a regional bank that, and, and this is for everybody and any state that you're in. If you can go to a regional bank, contact the the local banker, the relationship manager, the relationship banker, and with doing so. You can ask them what type of products do they have that doesn't require a, a full list of documents or does it or, or requires little to no documents because with doing so, then now you'll be able to see what programs they have. Right. Obviously, Warner Brother, Sony, they're one of the biggest lines of credit because they use music and they fund people that way. Why not you become your own line of credit? And now you can fund your own music. Become the bank. Become the bank. Damn, this major. So what y'all need to do right now, and I don't care what you're doing. Stop. Oh, listen, man. Get your phone out. You know what I mean? Your other phone. If you got one. Or even this phone. Don't go to 11 I mean, banks looking at one day. Just yeah, don't pay more attention. But what I'm phone. saying is what y'all need to do is text MWG. Mm. Right now, text MWG to 917-809-5707. 917-809-5707. 917-809-5707. You're going to get a live class, right? And you're going to get 30 days of coaching. I'm talking about Sir. how to start a funded company or just fund your dreams. How to Sir. fund your dreams. If you want to find your dreams, this is how you do it. Uh, brother Tevin and Brandon, they're coming. They, 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 they're on another level. Shout yep. out to all my people out in New York. You know what I'm saying? If I was from New York, I'd probably be from, I'm sorry, I'd be from, from the Bronx, nigga. I'd be from Brooklyn. <laughs> That's the <laughs> big ass. I'd be from Breakfast Stops. You the wouldn't be from the Bronx. I mean, Brooklyn. You'd be I'd from be, the Bronx. I'd be from that corner. Bronx. What's the corner nah, that which made the nah. juicy on? You remember the corner that was the nah, dirtiest part? What they said was the dirtiest part. They said the Bronx. They say the Bronx. Yeah, you say the Bronx. But every borough, every borough is thorough, so. Yeah, I know, but I want to be from the Bronx. That oh, joint, I sure. seen him. Baby, he came to this joint, Juicy. It was all the drinks. So I'll Man, be from that from corner Syracuse, right there. New York. That'll be New that New neighborhood I'll be from. <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying, once again, we ready to get up out of here. Another million dollars worth of game. Business Spotlight, Tevin. You know what I mean? Brandon, I appreciate y'all. Millionaire Essentials is going down. Mm. They represent New York. Listen, if you're in New York, you better tap in because New York is one of the biggest cities in the world. Y'all better tap in and get this information. This is y'all city's own. They're coming to get y'all the funding game. But what I need you to do before we do anything is text MWG to 917 809 5707. They're going to give you a live class and you'll get in 30 days not 10 days not 5 days not 3 days 30 days of coaching this is another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game been in the spotlight and it's just like that right let me ask you both a question we come from a different time and I know everybody like a lot of artists today not saying everybody but a lot be like fuck the DJ we don't need the DJ we don't need to go to the radio station do you think going to the radio station fucking with the DJs fucking with the uh, personalities matter Oh yeah, one hundred percent for me, especially. You know, like I said, I learned that from from being here, where DJs were damn near probably the most important. They was more important than the radio station. Yep, that's you know what I'm saying? And and it's still that way. You know, I feel like, yeah. you know, this younger generation they don't they don't care to know who is playing their records. But I say this all the time. I never seen niggas online get happy. When they records show up on a playlist, I seen niggas make videos on the highway and jump out the car when they songs come on on the radio. Yeah, it's different. To this day, not not in old. I'm talking about to this That's day. True. Young niggas when they hear their songs on the radio, that was real. Right now, and you and, and you sitting in this era, jump out the car, get their homeboy to film them dancing around on the highway with their song playing on the radio. It's a different type of energy. 
And it's a different type of mentality that you get when you hear yourself like, on that radio. Old. I only know how that feels in other places, though. Like, I built everything in my city without the radio. Like, without relationships yeah. with, with the people. Because they never mm -hmm. played the shit I make. Like, I don't make nothing that they would ever play. This is my first time having something that they might fuck with. I don't even know what they really going to do. But everywhere else, I feel it. So I feel what you're saying. But I also understand the motherfuckers who don't fuck with them because they still become millionaires without doing it. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm proof of that. But fucking with you is showing me, like, the impact of doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, when we made, when we finished the song, you said you Yeah, felt, I was like, you said damn, you, I, feel, I didn't you know, step you said you shit. You I said, told I him, I stepped already. in shit. I'm about to just order some cars. Like, this <laughs> this one of them ones that do all that shit I ain't never want to do. Like, this how no, I No, no, when you say you ready order some cars. we didn't try to do it, you know what I'm saying? When you say you ready order some cars, just say something. So you saying, damn, this publishing rate be crazy? Yeah, for sure. I was like, this publishing about to go. Check, the yeah, this about rate. to go. This shit going. This Why one don't you order ones. two new this cars? One one. Yeah, I did. I did that that night. I was like, fuck it. It's all good. It's on the way. This some Next shit thing. that I don't do. Like I already, I don't do this, so I know what's coming. But but let me ask you a question. In this game, you one of the legends of the card game. You got forty cards. Yeah. Uh, could you say that you go? Is, do Gilly got strong enough pieces to be welcome into that car world? For sure. I, I, I love the vet. I just wish it would have been out here. I wanted to see it. Fuck you mean do I got I wanted to I'm see it. I'm asking you, shut up. Nigga, I got yeah, a 1941, nah, nigga. Dude, You've been in my car. He's about a legit car guy. Fuck wrong. You've nah, been in my 1941 legit. when I pull up, he's nigga. He's legit. Yeah. Don't give a fuck what you win. Niggas is uh. like... Nigga, that's Bumpy Johnson shit. <laughs> yeah. When I first saw it, I didn't give it to him. I thought I thought it was for a shoot or something. At first, I was like, nah, I ain't even then, know. Then, yeah. then I got a Corvette that, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm going to shout out Swiss, man, because Sw I, this car was inspired by Swiss. Because Swiss, back in the day, you had a fucking Cadillac pickup truck. Not the, the caddy pickup, no, a fucking pickup no, truck where you put a caddy grill on the front of another <laughs> fucking car. Like, and really, I was fucked yeah. up about that. Yeah, they were. <clears throat> so, I put two cars together. I, put, I got a 1989 custom Corvette hood with a 1966 Corvette back on it. That's how I. Yeah, that's why that. So you know, thanks, Swiss. You know what I mean? Come the fuck on. you talking about my cars, nigga? You see my shit? Fuck wrong with you? Just jumped out the other day. And that came right now. Two to cars to go. Yeah, I did. I always just assumed it was like a stingray, and I wasn't looking at it right. Oh, like every time I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, it's got a, it's a sixty something." And I just ain't looking at yeah, it. Yeah, got an right eighty nine custom hood on it, and it got yeah, a sixty six right. Chevy back on it. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. So you know, I like so, the yeah, dude. Fuck around. Fuck around like that. Don't ask about my cars. Now, now, now when it come to it come to you spitting in Gilly, I will I will say from me being a I'm also a, a a cannabis historian from the from the outside. Oh listen, 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 cuz what I'm saying is that from the outside. From the outside, I don't smoke. Right? All right. So how the fuck do you be a cannabis? That's what no, I mean. because listen, listen. Come on. I don't smoke, but I'm have a, a I'm like a a, a a vegan chef, but I cook at a steakhouse. I don't smoke, but I know what it look like. Am I correct? Do I know what good weed look like? No, because good weed don't. Sometimes you. So, yep, sometimes, sometimes this sometimes shit can look magnificent. Look like and this shit can be that, yeah. the motherfucking diarrhea shit. Now, okay. Talking to y'all, asking y'all. What is. How do you know you got a good bat? Is it a feeling? Is it a smell? How do you know you got some good shit? Well, you got to put a light on it first. Mm -hmm. if you, as long as you're looking at it and some light. If you're going off, look. Mm -hmm. Then how it's going to grind up. Like how it feels, the shit got to have the right texture to it. Now, mm -hmm. if you're talking about once you pull it and shit, you got to feel something. Like for me, if it's real gas, I feel it like under my eyes and shit like that. Like I used to tell my homies, it feel like I was getting freckles on my face once I started pulling this shit. Let me cut you off. Yeah. You just was in here a month ago. I forget what guest it was, but he smoked the weed. Kev, you got it on camera. It's in one of our episodes. It, it was Rob Ford Nine. His people said, I feel it in my eyes, man. Oh, you're the boy that was like, sitting on the side of yeah, people. That, 
That's good fucking weed. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. There you go. Nah, that's it. That's fuck legit. You feel you. it right up. Because the time you felt something in your eye when, when Lou with the dead eye socked the shit out of you and you rolled up under that car because back in the day. I ain't going front. Gil. You felt it right in his eyes. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, Lou was, a, Lou was a bad motherfucker though. He got bad at me because yeah. I ain't helping him. I was like, I seen Lou sock you. So I was taking that shit. <laughs> I got <laughs> Fuck are you talking about? I back the fuck up. You my big cousin. I'm your big little life. cousin. You Bigger than me, nigga. That changed my life now. <laughs> that changed people, my life. people might hear Gil say this, and I'm gonna tell you where it came from. When Gil say Dookie and designer bags that come from this, we used to go to cookies and made money and all these stores, right? And I'd be like, cuz, get that bag, get that one, and get that one. He's like, Man, fuck no. That shit Dookie and Designer bags. That's where he got the saying from because I'm always I'm I'm real good on packaging. Because the way I look at cannabis, I look at all right, this is how I look at. I look at cannabis, the cannabis inside of as like an artist. I look at that as the music. And I look at the packaging as the merch. So I'm mm-hmm. caught up in the merch. I'm like, yo, look at that. Get that right there. Yeah, that's what happened get that. to everybody. Because, because of the packaging of them bags, especially when it's a thick packaging and the shit is not cheap. I'm like, cuz, get this. This is some good weed. He's he going to back. Man, that shit bullshit, man. This shit 14%, man. T- <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, no, that's yeah. some good shit. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking yeah. like. You the, just figure if they went through all that trouble to put it inside of that. This shit costs got, money. Nah, this nah. good weed. So, so It's cheaper to get all that packaging than to grow some good weed than to put the technology and the time now. into growing some good shit. Because I don't want to, like, I don't want to say, I'm never going to say nobody's name, but it was, a, it was, first of all, I learned this. This is what I learned. He said something. How can you sell me weed if you're not a weed, if you're not really into weed? Fuck you, smoke a blunt here. And I'm talking about a weed head. Both of y'all smoke about. Listen, I'm gonna just get. It. You smoke about twenty of a fifteen to twenty a day. He smoke about yeah, fifteen to twenty sure. a day. For sure. You're not smoking them type of weeds. How you got a weed brand? Or how you talking about weed? Like, yeah, for like, sure. Like really. Be, That's and then how I, I feel. And too. then I learned. And then off off camera, I seen a lot of people say, "Oh no, this weed bullshit." This weed. and I'm thinking like, damn, these dudes got people because now it's like if you got somebody that's a celebrity. Back in it, it posed, no, that ain't the truth. That shit ain't the truth. Because he is a lot of shit we go into these stores and get, and he'd be like, all oh, this shit bullshit right here. Yeah. And he would leave that shit and get it. You know, if you, go somewhere, if you go somewhere and somebody just giving you the weed, like, all right, you go with any of these, right, the weed is bad. And they'd be like, no, hey, go smoke that. I don't know in Atlanta, nigga, I left four ounces in a fucking room. Yeah, I was like, damn, you can't do this. <laughs> damn. damn. Shit, I gave it. I left two two ounces on, on your fucking, uh, like, next to your hoop. <laughs> That's I you told know. him it was fish food. <laughs> yeah, see? I was nigga. like, nigga, bring me some fish well, food, bro. I can't in Atlanta, y'all God, niggas, man. You was like, Welcome to Atlanta where they hey, sell hey, do put my, don't put my tag on it. Yeah, man. Hey, man. That's, that's, what, the, that's, that's yeah. what the shit should be uh, now. Right. Welcome to Atlanta where they sell do hey, But see, Atlanta hey, is selling hey, do hey, hey, man. Hey, I'm saying this though. But then somebody pulled up and brought me some fire. So you yeah, got to make the right yeah, call. No, you got to give me that nigga's number. Right, no, you got to make the right call. But I will say this in Atlanta. Shit. And I will say this to you, JD. Atlanta is like. The United Nations now. Everybody's there. It's everybody. So the land is not a land no more. It's not even as organic. Like you got the people in there that still banking their moves, but it's not even. It's, it, Atlanta is D.C., Cleveland, Philly, uh, Charlotte, uh, Detroit, Detroit. But I just wonder how they making all them hip records off the Dookie weed down there. Oh man, here you go. I, don't nah, know, I can't, I can't speak right on call. the weed. Everybody they think the right well, I can't speak on the weed. They weed. making that hits up there, dude. We got the some right good call. hookah. They making the right. We got the right hookah down there. Yeah, they they're making right. the right call. They got to be finding the same shit I found out there. That's what you make the hits off hookah. Oh yeah, hookah man. Yeah, hookah. Shit, the hookah man. Got a hookah. What's your favorite song? Like a dry album? ice machine. Just <laughs> like the whole time, just. Like a fog machine, like yeah, in a haunted house. Yeah, what's up. your favorite what's song? What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song? What's your favorite? Uh, never enough. The one where he had the high top on the on the, on the uh, from the black shit. That's what's my your, favorite one because he favorite rapped one? on it. Oh man, I mean, right now I'm gonna go with Essence Fest because I just feel like what is what is what is doing it's it's energy It's bringing energy back to to to, to male hip hop. I mean, you know, uh, got my artist right here, LA to go. He be, we be having a conversation back and forth about how the females is dominating the dance floor right man, listen, now. Man. Listen, not just the dance floor. Do you know how many dudes listen to Glorilla? Like, she harder than the motherfucker. She harder than the... You, like, we was, like... We was on a motherfucking college football bus on the way to the arena. Said, we ready to turn up, play that Glorilla. They said, we ready to turn up, play Glorilla. I was like, damn. 
<laughs> yeah. No, Glow, Glow, that's my homie, but it just that's fucked tight. me up that a bus full of niggas was like, let's turn up. You know what I want to hear. So but it, ain't, it, ain't, it, it ain't not to cut you off. It's not even about the actual <laughs> female or male. What? It's the record sound better. It's about the energy. Mm-hmm. No, the record sound better. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I was going to tweet this the other night. We was in live. Every record that played, the City Girls record sounded the best. Mm. Mix wise, uh. the 808. I'm listening to it from a sonic sound. It just sounds better. Let me ask and, you a and question. And glow records sound better. Yeah, yeah. From, from, you know, from you knowing, and you could, I need you to talk to the women out there, right? I need you to talk to the women out there because there's a lot of hot women out here that's trying to do their thing in the music business. They got the look. Some of them got to say, what, what game can you get in about this game and being a woman? Uh, they don't want to hear me. When the no, you got to say No, I want you to say I mean, I don't, I, I don't, they don't want to hear my game. I'm saying... I just feel like, you know, making better music is just the key. You know what I mean? That's 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 my answer to everybody. And just, when you say making better music. That's a good music, way to tap dance around it, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I got to tap dance around this. You know, because the like, they, they got mad at me when I said the thing about female rap before. Oh, like, I ain't never heard that. What'd you say? I said, I said, somebody asked me which female did I think was trying to be the best rapper. And I said, I don't really hear females trying to be best rappers. I said it sound like they all work at the strip club, mm. and they they went crazy on my head. Like JD, you, know, you call all female rappers strippers, and I'm like, no, it's the music and the sound. Is that is that is that? So you hearing that Miami sound that that Luke Skywalker sound? You saying <laughs> yeah. coming out of their music? Yeah, uh, but I, but but I, but I I, I, I I you know I was answering the question though because I I come from an era where. Moni Love was trying to be like the best rapper. Latifah mm. was trying to be MC the Light. best rapper. Yeah. And Quinette was trying MB. to rap. Yeah, Roxanne right? Shante. Foxy Sweet Brown, tea. Foxy Brown, Lil' Kim, mm. to me, they was rapping. Well, I then think I Nikki signed rap. one the first female rapper to ever go platinum is on So So Death. The Brat. So the I don't That's a rapper. niggas can't dis I can't I can't dislike female rap because I've made it possible for females to rap mm, talk heavy, with man. her. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I come from a place where a female will go toe to toe with some niggas. Mm, Brat, yeah. she ready to go head up with any nigga. Yeah. Mm. And, and you're right. Now, I want to say this, though. I understand that statement, but it is a, it is it is some females. You're receive a few emails, it is, my boy. It is females out here <laughs> making music. Outside. Nikki, Nikki raps. Yeah, but no, I'm not just talking about Nikki. I'm talking about no, the but I'm just saying Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Come yeah, on, by the way, Nikki West and, and Hove, I think, on that's, that's, yes, that's what Nikki. Yes, that's what Nikki. <laughs> Nikki understood that. By the way, she come from an era where yeah. that's what that's what mm-hmm. matters. Right, so right. Being the rapping. Yeah. Right. I, th- I think the New York energy of women was different anyway. They more harder and they not playing anyway. They well, come from I mean, for me, for me, like even when I deal with Brat. When I was making Brat Record, Brat Record was the hardest record for me to ever make because I couldn't figure out how, what you just saying, I couldn't figure out how I was going to get my homeboys to listen to my music that I was making with a female. And I, and, I, and, I, and I sat with this forever trying to figure out, like, what is it, what sound can I make to make these niggas like her? And it wasn't about the sound. It was about her rapping. It was about... They gonna respect her once she starts spitting these lyrics because niggas respect rapping. And you can't, you know, at some point you gotta let go of if it's a male or a female and just pay attention to she how good. niggas is putting these words together, right? right? And that's what happened with the brat. When niggas seen brat in um crisscross video, uh uh um the bomb, when the when she came out in that video, I seen people reaction to her lyrics, and I was like, Oh, okay. I gotta make records that make her just rap. It ain't about me trying to make no dance music. It ain't about, and I feel like, I feel like we've yet to see that in this era of female rap. Really, I see what 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 the girls from Memphis is doing. They doing what they supposed to be doing. Like what you said, pay attention to your era. I mean your your area. I love what they doing because they paying attention to what happens in their hood and how they get down. But where's this the, this other era? You know. The what 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 like what Nikki new record is doing? She rapping on that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. She rap. You made me pay attention to that shit. She rapping on that motherfucker. And you know. You know what I believe too, though. That first verse on that song, she going to fuck off. I yeah. believe that there, there is women out here 
that can rap on that level you talking about. They're trying to rap, but the agenda is not pushing them if they're not talking about true some ass shit, some titty, you know. True. And they, so, so you got women that could bar, they got bars. You got that. It's just that they're not being amplified because it's like there's one song that's on this shit you, on some super. Um, Whatever you because might it, Because if I'm coming from the bottom and I'm, a, and I'm a girl and I can't get some shit that's catchy that can, that can uh, catch on TikTok paid, or, yeah, or Instagram or it, Twitter or something to go viral, then it's not like back in the day where as though you could be Lauren Hill bumping to somebody, you could get signed, they could put you out, you could blow... You gotta really, you, you know, you gotta really blow from home and shit. But not that's, that's, that, that's the thing I'm saying when I say we out here working. I want the motivation. I want people to understand those roads are not closed, man. You know, damn near though. Nah, no, they're not. When, <laughs> when, when, if you're a rapper, if you're a real rapper, and you're in a city, I don't know what your city looks like, but I'm saying my city, right? It's places where you can go as a real rapper. It might not be Phillips Arena. Right. It might not I mean State Farm Marine It might not be the biggest places in Atlanta But it's places where you can go Where you can get that rap shit off yeah. So people can start respecting you as a rapper And all it, You know A hundred people can turn into a thousand people yeah. You just gotta be You gotta wanna take You, you, you just gotta you, wanna do that yeah, you shit You just gotta bro. wanna work You, gotta you want, can't you gotta worry about what there. nobody else doing yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard Spiller say progress, this people progress bro Like in that microwave They working fast They doing that shit on the phone If you gonna watch them Then you gonna go crazy Yeah I mean anything is possible for me, I you know, I just think that, you know, if we living in a time where that type of rap not really, it's not the thing with the youth, with the owners of tomorrow. You feel what I'm saying? But you got niggas like, you know, Griselda Gang who pulled it off. Yep. They mm -hmm. come in, they slide in because it's still an audience for You got Curse, shit. you got Larry June, yeah, you got right. a, a move. These dudes is doing shows around the country, selling out merch, selling out cannabis, like doing me, yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's still kids that it's still kids that look at the other one that's like, man, y'all all just fuck with that because it's still niggas that want to be different, right? Absolutely, like, you know what I'm saying? That's and what I'm they saying. all just end up just making it. They all make their own subcultures and, and support the shit that they like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, and I, they make them motherfuckers just as rich. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they make they fucking made us just as rich to make sure we could compete and never had the switch. And sound like that other shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. like, they that, take care. Shit, Your fan yeah. base take care. You. But I think, Fair I enough. think, I think, still and all, I think what what young people that don't probably don't know about this is that you still have to go to you got to find out about what it is that you that that it is that you doing. If you want to be in their world, you got to go to their world, right? We went to Larry June listening party the other night, and I, what I was doing while I was in there was looking around to see if I seen me. I I know the niggas that's supposed to be there. I was trying to see the niggas that that's that that compete with what I do and that's in the same world that I'm in. I ain't none of them niggas was there. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm seeing and when none of them mm -hmm. there. Right? That's that's what I'm saying. If you going to do that, it's there for you to be for it to be done, but you got to go over there. You can't do it from where we at. Right. And and think that you going to play in they field. Right. They going they ain't going to let you in if you from over here and you ain't fucking with them. Right. You got to go over there, right? So I'm saying if it's a female rapper that want to rap she got to go where that's happening at. Like, right. it's niggas out here that got battles. And you, I mean, you got to get into all that. You got to battle. If you ain't ready for that, like, that's what I was trying to do in a rap game when I was doing that TV show. I was trying to make sure that these, to let young people know at home and on the show that if you want to be in this, I don't know what route you want to take. But if, at some point, you might have to battle. At some point, you're going to do live shows. At some point, you're going to do, you're going to figure out how to dress, right? right? That's what the whole show was about. And I gave, that was their assignments. And you people saw that. That was because that's what I know, right? When I came to, like I said, when I came, when we came here to Philly to work with Criss Cross, nobody understood what I was doing with these kids, right? And, you know, shout out to Joe Butcher. Um, Charles, shout out to Joe Charles, Butcher. Joe the Charles Butcher. Schultz. Uh, yeah, Charles yeah. Schultz. Um, it was Chris, the, Schwartz. Chris, Chris Schwartz. Chris Schwartz. Chris Schwartz. Um, and, and, you know, the whole Studio 4. Studio 4 was a place just for hip-hop history for y'all no, to know. No, no, no. It was a Cypress place. Hill. Yeah, Cypress Hill. Hill. One was in there. Yeah. Um, uh, Tim Dog. Tim Dog, uh, yeah. Man, it was, it was just a hip-hop place, right? We was there looking and... It was just like, damn, this shit is crazy. And we seeing all these people. But you learn. You start learning like, okay, Jermaine, you know you ain't supposed to be here after midnight. But 
You supposed to be there If you want to be in this shit You got to see it You know what I mean I yeah. had no real reason to be there I wasn't getting paid Nobody You know what I mean didn't, Nobody didn't know who I was But I was there Soaking it up And you have to soak this shit up okay, If you want to be in it I get it What you saying is You had to be in there To hear how them songs hit Yeah you got oh, this to they, This what they like Yeah They liked it that Okay the high hit They liked it that So I'm you know, And, I'm, and by cut. the way I'm thinking the same way Females probably was thinking At the time Because It's a kid group no kids was out in hip hop. Mm-hmm. No kids. And how do I get these 11 and 12 year old kids to compete with a currency? In his mind, they can't. Mm-hmm. In everybody else's mind that was that age, looking at these kids, fuck them little niggas. Right? right? I, I'm like, nah, we got to come out with a record that comes on and it sounds like it's supposed to be played with this nigga record. Right. I'm listening to Tough Crew. I'm listening to, I'm saying, I'm listening to 808s and all of this shit. I'm like, man, I got to make records that sound like this. But I got to learn how to chop samples. I got to, nobody was telling me nothing. I'm just. But, but that song, jump, uh, jump, dun, 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 what, did that come from Mike? Yeah. Did you sample that or did you play yeah, it? I sampled it. Oh my God, he took a chunk out of that money, didn't he? Oh yeah, of course. But you don't yeah, give a fuck when you seven nineteen. Yeah. I don't I mean, I don't care. I don't know what that means, by the way. I ain't made no money for you to take no money, so I don't care what you you gonna take the money. I just I just need to blow. If a nigga tell me he taking some money from me at that age, I'm happy because that means I'm making some money. Right. Like I must have yeah. made some money, nigga tell me he's gonna take some money. Like Easy took two cent out of every record that was made by Chris Cross because I used the boys in the hood. I know that because that felt like a lot to me. Two cent did? It did. Cause once they got the eight million, I'm like, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> was easy E hard to deal with? Nah. He was easy. He's like, I just need two cent. I mean, you know, he was just about his business. He was about but it. like I said, I'm I'm I, I, at this age I'm young. I'm the whole album is samples. I ain't I'm I i did not know I'm no plan, nothing. Cause like I said, I'm also I'm really, really hip hop, and I'm really thinking like instruments is whack. I don't want to play guitars, keyboards, none of this. I don't want to hit none of that shit on my records. It's, I'm all about the turntables and digging in these crates. That's all I was thinking about, mm-hmm. right? So that's why, like today, they asked me when we doing an interview, is this record that we doing? Um, me trying to prove a point, and I'm like, no, this is me just letting people know this is what I this is what I really know how to do. Right. I make. R&B records, just trying to do it, and it happened to work. And right. I figured out, let me try to do the same thing I did the first time and repeat it. But rap, I sit around all day and sample records and make songs, not put the songs out, make another song, hold the hook, whatever. I just do it. That's just what I, that's what I grew up doing. Right. That's major now. Shit, now, now uh, y'all, y'all excited about this album? I am. And what, you, what do y'all feel is going to do within the game? Um, I feel like motherfuckers who wasn't fucking with with shit I was doing and probably like just aware of it, but they wasn't really tapping in. They gonna give it a listen this time. That's what I think for sure. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, but we going on tour. We gonna you know we got our first show is on April seventh mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Three days after the album come out, so you know, um, and. The way we talk about doing the show, I think that's going to change hip hop. That's going to change what y'all this whole conversation about what y'all been talking about when we first came in here. Yeah, we're gonna have to come back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all. Absolutely. You know I'm talking about always. always welcome. You know what you I'm go. saying? Get that album. Yeah. Get I'm that album. Download, stream, TikTok, Instagram, everything. Twitter, everything. Support, support, support. Hey, you already know we got we got a. A strong community. Go get that. Go so get so jets. Go jet get life. that. You see the merch? Right. You got yeah, the merch yeah, all yeah. on. Jet go life. Right. Go get that. And it's just like that. Right.